Oh, shit. Oh. You good? <laughs> yeah, facts. You good? Oh, what's this thing on, Daddy? All right. <clears throat> All right, so you can do a countdown. We'll roll. Sure, son. I like your countdowns. Three, two. I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, I'd like to take this chance to apologize. To absolutely nobody. So the one and only Cy Ire is here, man. I'm talking about Cy Ire the kid. Cy Ire's in the building, man. The Cy Ire the kid. Cy Ire the kid. I am Cy Ire, but I am not sorry. It's the Cy Ire not sorry show, mother. Cause. Ah, here we go, y'all, man. First episode, the Cy Ire not sorry show. Um, it's a pleasure, man, to have everybody here. We're gonna get this thing off and running. Um. Me and O gonna go on some sort of a first date. Pause. But just no kind of letting it. No pause. Whatever, it is what man, it is. Whatever. Just kind of letting everybody know. Like, you know, we want y'all to know us. We want, we want everybody. I, I want everybody who taps in from the beginning to be arguing with people later. Like, no, he likes this. He's from here. He did this. He has these parents. He, you know, Sai has both his parents, surprisingly. Yeah. O doesn't always have all his parents in his life, surprisingly. Like so the roles a little reverse. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we here, man. We're going to get this rolling, man. It's been a good day, though. I've been excited all day, bro. How your day start, bro? Bro, it's a good day. I've been excited all day. How'd you um, start, though? How'd you kick it off knowing that we was... Bro, I got this fucking bump on my lip. And I don't know if you've noticed it. You haven't said anything. <laughs> you see that It's pissing me the fuck I, off. I don't look at the... It's kind of like a herp lips. bump or it's a cold sore. I don't know because I haven't been that active lately. <laughs> but the, the point is, um, Damn, I, I was told a cold sore is herpes anyway. Damn, is it? It's like a form of herp. People, it's not the same exact. It's like comparing Adderall to cocaine. It's not the same exact fucking thing, but they have <laughs> yo, the same components in it. Damn, I would have, I would have reshot today. Someone, no, I would have reshot today. I no. promise you, we well, shot today. I got the stash perfectly lined up. For real. So it kind of cloaks the bump. That's amazing, son. Someone could look it up though. By the way, I think <laughs> a cold, crazy. a cold sore is a form of herpes. But it was like a few days ago. Mm. I was just outside going for a walk. You know what I'm saying? I was listening to some. Uh, I don't even know what I was listening to, but I was just, you know, I was, I was listening to Shook Ones before I went to bed. Good record. Get in my bag. One my, of my favorite songs. Eminem Eight Mile Bag Before mm, Sleep. Right. Don't stereotype me. Right. And um, the next morning I woke up and I had a fucking mm. bump on my lip. I wasn't even eating pussy, eating ass, eating nothing. I didn't even eat. And you ain't telling me to the show. I didn't tell you to right now. I'm bitching about it and I'm upset. You're a real one for keep shooting. Yo, I come did. on. I woke up yeah, this I morning and so I was like, I was a little, I, I set my alarm to get my head cut early. And then um, hair? Miss my, yeah. Well, Haircut? you know, I get the fresh baldy. Oh, okay. Fresh baldy. You know what I'm saying? With the beard lined up. I ain't been to the barber shop in years, but um, snooze my alarm. Was that, a, was that a flex? What? Not going to the barber shop in years. A fact flex though. Yeah. I, I mean, I I don't I don't like going to barber shops no more. Barbers are liars. They well, lie. What you mean? You know what? Barbers be lying, bro. You you, you get that? I, I, th I thought men, all of us, I thought we looked forward to the barbershop talk and like talking sports. It and ain't like... the same like it used to be. And it's not, now the barbers are so expensive. They cost so much. You don't really get that authentic combo in there like you used to. Like, I mm. missed my appointment today. Then I had to pull up on them. I paid them, though, for the inconvenience because, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, it cost to come to the crib. Mm -hmm. I snoozed my alarm, overslept, and then I paid them for the inconvenience for the cut. And I was like, yo, wherever you shop at, bro, I'm going to just pull up today. I got to make an exception. I need this cut. I gotta, I'm got. i shooting today. Right. I pull up to the joint. He over there for- um, This really happened? It's a true story. Okay. He off of Camp Creek. My, my man, L. Book. Yeah. And um, I go in there and- uh, Camp was, Creek for the cut is nasty work. I, I like it being I like it being in the black side of town, though. I don't, I don't want to get my hair cut in Sandy Springs. Right. Like Even if, though, if if you if if he would have told me Bankhead, I wouldn't have been mad. I right. go, I'll pull up. I feel like you're getting back in touch with your people. That's it. You know what I'm saying? It was cool. So I, I went in there. It, it was a vibe though. Somebody in there recognized me. It was a, but everybody wasn't really chopping it up. I didn't hear no. It was loud. quiet in there. I feel like everybody who was cutting was like damn near whispering to their client. Like, damn. It, it, it wasn't like nobody. It's not no, the same anymore. No. Like fuck Dak Prescott and then the whole. Nothing. No LeBron damn. versus Kobe talks. Like nobody was yelling across at the next barber or I didn't see that one barber that don't get many cuts. Like it, it wasn't the real. It, I don't miss it at all, but I got my shit cut though. It worked out. Panned out. Got here. Got to the office. Ran some errands. Got a little something to eat out. I've just been excited, man. I've been excited too, bro. Some missed the school bus too. Damn. Yeah, that, that kind of started me, threw me off a little bit too. 
Did you blank that was it his fault? Yeah, my son is in seventh grade. Of course it's his fault. Okay, so it's, it's, his, fault. it's his, just, that's the age where you kind of, you know, your son kind of. How do you, how do you measure those school. infractions as a parent, though? Like your son misses the bus. Is that ass whooping? Or it's just like, no, yo, what the fuck are you no, doing? No, no, because I missed my alarm that same morning. So if, if I had to discipline my son like that the same day, I, I was late for my own shit, too. But now I, I told him that um I take his phone. You know, they need Damn. that. Yeah, I take his phone for the day. I'm like, let me get that. Because now I got to bring you to school. Because some days when he missed the bus, I got to get up and take him to school. Luckily, today, I was already getting up in motion. But, um, no, nah, I mean, I done missed the bus plenty of times. We all go through it. But I, but you also teaching them responsibility. So it's like, yo, I need that phone. No video game today. No phone today. Tomorrow, let's bounce back. Let's get back on track. Not, I, know that, not, I know that killed him, though. Nah, and, and my son's doing real good in school right now, too. He, he used to struggle with school off and on. But with, with the grades being good, and you, he been doing better with his chores and shit like that. I don't really. You, you got to measure that. As, you, you still got to be but, human. But as that's a the crazy part. It's a different era. So having the phone in school, in middle school now, a smartphone, an iPhone. Yeah. But if that was you, I'm saying with an iPhone in middle school. Yeah. You're setting up pussy appointments in the bathroom in the day. <laughs> yeah, so you I, I killed him today when you took his yeah, phone. Yeah, he hated. It. You you could you could feel the drain as you take the device from him. He's thinking about all the shit he's about to miss, all the games he plays on it. D does it's he tough. have any like power over you? Like, can, d like, are you too like G of a, a pops to where like, can your son do anything where like you feel bad for him in the moment and you cave in and don't discipline him the way you planned? Does he does he make like a bitch ass face or like a cry baby ass shit where you like, all right, man, here or like, any is does, does he ha is, does he have a go to thing where like <laughs> he has power over you? My son put his head down a lot, a lot about a, like you could feel it. You could feel the mope or he might walk around and do something slow. Like, but um, as a parent, I feel like you got to check that. You got to pay attention to your kids. You can't just parent. Mm. You got to pay attention to your children. Everybody moves different. You know what I mean? Like, my son bounces back from shit quicker than my daughter do. Mm. So, you, yeah, I pay attention to all that. His energy, and it transfers into how he plays sports as well, too. Like, he might put his head down after making a mistake and coach yell. I'm like, bro, you got to be able to. Like, those habits and those repetitions is, like, super key. With my son, it's it's a tough line though, cause we at the house with no female in the house, so that makes it, you know, no... it's kind of gay at your house. <laughs> yeah, it get a little, it get a little overly masculine. Nah, for real though, it do. Nah, it get yeah. like that sometimes. It's gonna be an exciting time when he starts bringing girls over. Damn, yeah, I don't that really switch know. is coming. He's in what grade is he? Seven. Oh my god, he's right there. My son behind from where I was at. That's what I'm saying though. Well, yeah. how old was you when you first was getting fresh? Was fresh. Like, like I was making out with girls in seventh grade. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Seventh grade. I don't know if he did that yet though. You was getting head in middle school? No. Eighth grade? Nope. Ninth. I you, lost my virginity. Before you got head? Facts. Really? Yeah, I ain't get confident whipping my dick out till like <laughs> till like junior year. That's crazy. Yeah, you don't, you don't just have that immediately. You're not just whipping it out. You you don't really know. You know what's crazy? I was getting head from middle school. Till like like eighth grade. Yeah, I wasn't doing that yet. Till like Hell no. high school, but Hell I was scared no. of. I was always like, my mom put that fear in me of like, my mom was always on something. If you get someone pregnant, I will fucking kill you. For real. So I was I hmm. was terrified of sex up until like late high school. Basically, that is crazy though. But yeah, I was always finding some little you know, right? Just brown skin damn head before distress. sex. You got yeah. head before sex. Yeah. Damn, oh, facts. I, do that. I would like miss football practice and like walk into the woods right off, like right by high school, lay down like a picnic blanket and like <laughs> Yo. get sucked up. By yeah, the, I ain't I'm really, not gonna say her name. I don't know but. when I got hit. I don't know the first time I got hit. I remember my virginity, but I don't remember getting hit. And now that I, I'm having this moment of like this, like mm. epiphany, I think right. that's why like I, I love head so much though. To this day, right. I'm, I'm a head guy. You got, yeah, like, you, like you went in head first, I'll take head real, over yeah. the box though. For real? Still to this day? I'm not mad at it. If it's like really good, there's something about that moment, the like submissive nature of it. 21 had a line on his album. He Eye said, contact. You heard that about, line he said? Uh uh, no. He said, if you get pussy without head, then you lame. If you get pussy without head. That shit made me so uncomfortable because I do that a lot. Damn. <laughs> I think it I depends though. Like, are you on some quickie shit? Are you in the whip? You just pulled. Really you just care. pulled. You just pulled really, on top of head, you real quick. Like we talked about this. Head is a priority for you. Head not really like. It is a priority for not me. Not a priority for me. You know. You know what it does? 
I think it's an ego thing too, though. I think it makes me feel in the moment like, oh, mm. d- d- this bitch, she really wants me for real. She's got my right. dick in her mouth. <laughs> yeah. that, that's how I feel in the moment. Yeah, I'm like, oh, sure. she she really wants me. She's with right, it. Right. It's, it's up from here. No, that's a fact. I don't, I never prioritize it like that, though. I like it, though. I love it like you love it, but I'm not tripping if I don't get it. It's not going to turn me off or throw me off. It, it depends, though. Yeah. I quickies. Mean, I've had a lot of quickies. Yeah. I feel like you made a lot of love. You think so? Yeah, you got time. Nah. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. No, I was I was getting neck down. It has a lot I of was time. getting neck down. How, how long you prefer to get hit? And she's good at it. <sighs> Honestly. It depends. That's what I'm saying. Cause then cause then if she goes too long, now yeah. I might get too polished. To where it's like, by mm. the time I get in the pussy, I might be too warmed up now. Now I might not be in the That's pussy as long. So how long do you want? But if it's fire, I might stay a while. That's what I'm saying, bro. That's what I'm saying. Even on the quickie? What you mean? You, you don't have quickies? Yeah. All right, then. All of them. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> but no. But no, like, it just depends, you know? All right, no, it, just, it just depends. I'm like, you. you know what's crazy, bro? The only time I don't have a quickie, bro, is if, I, if I'm like... If something about Shorty, I'm like really like, I really like her or like I'm really mm. impressed by her or I think she's right. super bad because then I'm like two things I'm thinking about. And you don't have to deal with this a lot because I'm well, n- most of the time you're probably laid up with a nice, wonderful sister, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm saying you're a brother yourself. Right. But like I got a whole human race on my shoulders when I'm diving in some pussy because mm. I don't fuck white women like that. Mm. Damn. That's... So it's like, Damn. and I don't don't get it fucked up. I, <laughs> I get a lot of women that do the whole like, oh, I've never had a white guy before. You believe it every time? I don't believe it every time, but it feels good. <laughs> it feels great. It feels great. It feels great. It feels yeah, great to hear sure. it. I, I respect it's that. It's almost like yeah. when a chick lets you hit on the first night. Right. And you like, um, you not necessarily. She says she don't do this. Right. Sometimes. I do feel special. I feel like, oh, she pressed over me. I don't never believe that shit. I know, because you're an asshole. I don't never believe but that But I shit. believe it sometimes. Not even like I trust Our them. Our game ain't I that believe good. It. I know, but I believe it in the sense of ego. Like, damn, she really on my I'll take it, though. For real. I'm not about to argue with her. No, no, me neither. I'm not going to be like. I'm not going to eat your lunch for that. That's what I'm saying. What nigga's yeah. going to be like, this, she, this is my first. This, I don't do this. I don't. And like, come on, my, stop lying. Yes, you do. You'll, you'll ruin the pussy. Right. Everybody yeah, I'm not going to debate you out of the pussy. Yeah, ladies, no cap, bro. We don't believe that shit. Celibacy? Yeah. Like, when you tell us you celibate, when you say you don't have sex on the first night, like, I I don't usually do this, but, uh, ooh, daddy, like, we, in our head, we letting you ride with it, but that shit. Yeah, we don't believe you, but it does feel good to hear it. It's like, it's like good. going through the motions. It's like, it's like the run sets up the pass. Just let football. me know I, I, I beat the game. I'm on to the next level. Right. I don't, I don't give a fuck how I got here. But yeah, I'm getting but I say that to say when I get in there, I'm like, damn, if this is hmm. her first white guy, but I got to like hold it down. Got to hold it down. I like that though. Because I don't want to, if I'm in here for five minutes, she's going to be like, oh, right, right. this motherfucker. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? That's, <laughs> that's how they usually sound, the that's women I sleep with too. That's how they talk? That's how they talk. I got you, man. We going on this first day to what, man? Let's do it, B. All right, let's, 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 let's get to know each other, man. Hey, yo. Let me, let me, let me see this laptop real quick. Uh, we're going to make sure everybody kind of has a good gist of who, what, when, what, why, each other. All right, I'm going to let you crank it off, man. You the boss. Yo. You the boss of that right there. Run it off. Motherfuckers should know by now. But, what? yo, where you from, man? Give give the people the rundown. You know, you know what's funny about that question, though? From and at is, because people say it's not where you're from, it's where you at. So, I, and I get, I get this a lot because it's like, I'm from the Bronx. I came out of the womb. In New York City. So from is where you're born. Right. To you. Right. But even though I equally rep, I moved to Atlanta when I was nine. So I rep the Bronx, mm. but I also rep Atlanta. I also rep the north side of Atlanta, right? Mm. I also rep Cobb County, you know what I'm saying? North side, Sunny Far North, whatever. So that's technically like, I claim both though, even though some people are like, you ain't from here, you from New York. And then New York people are like, nigga, you ain't really from New York. You left New York when you was nine, even though I still go home a lot. And then your whole your, by the, your whole aura feels New York, by the way. It could jump around though, because no, when it I do. get you yeah. know you, you know what's funny about that? And I seen this with Jamaicans. When ja, you, you ever talk to a Jamaican that's that's been out here a long time, like in America, right? They have a regular American accent. But then if they get mad, right. that shit come out. And I, I seen a lot of angry shit in New York. So when I get mad, I go all the way 
the Bronx. Right. When I'm happy and hooping, I sound like I'm from Atlanta. And it's not an act either. It's not, you know how people make fun of Drake because his accent changes all the time? Yeah. It's like, bro, when I'm talking like I'm from Atlanta, it's authentic. And yeah. when I'm talking like I'm from New York, it's authentic. Yeah, I hate <clears> when people like factor that in as like code switching or whatever they call it. But it's like express kind of similarly with me. I was born in Cali. I don't really rep Cali at all. I didn't even know that. I was born in San Diego. Damn. Because my mom was in the military. She was right. stationed out there. But right. you was nine. You moved to the A. When hmm. I was nine, I moved to New York. Right. Hmm. You know what I mean? That's crazy. And then in high school, I moved down south to South Carolina. What do you claim? So I, you always give long answers when people ask. Yeah, I know. I hate this. I get but, very but flustered. But if somebody was to be like, where are you from? What are you saying? I'm from South Carolina. You from South Where? Yeah. I'm from like Monk's Corner, South Carolina. South Carolina. And you claiming that? That's what I claim. I yeah, can live yeah. with that. Yeah, but I will say I've been in the A so long now, like a decade or more, that like right. I do feel I have so much love for the A, and the A feels like home for real. You know why I could claim both? I feel like I was outside in a long period of time in both areas. Mm. I feel like my whole family's from New York. My 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 parents is from Harlem. I moved to the Bronx. My, I still got family in the Bronx. I done took you to the Bronx, went to the corner store, the man, the, you know what I mean? The person behind the counter, Bought crack. show me love, give me free sandwiches. Yeah. I've come, and no one can tell me I'm not from Atlanta because I done did more outside in Atlanta than a lot of these yeah. niggas that was born in Grady Hospital. So I always look at it like you can't, I went to elementary, middle, and high school in Atlanta. Yeah, so it's like a nigga can't tell me I'm not from both. But anyway, that that that, that kind of, that's another. No, I feel that though, because I from. wasn't outside of New York like that because I was in high school when I left. That's why I, and I was to stop claiming it too. Yeah, well, but we like I learned upstate. so much yeah. there, though. I learned how to rap in upstate. No, nah, real shit. It's, it's, still a, it's still a piece of you. Yeah. Watch your mouth. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's your family background like, though? Like, what was it like, the Sire household growing up? Family what background? What was that family dynamic like? Was it um, a, well, you know, my, my grandparents was, like, originated in Camilla, Georgia. It was, like, cotton fields and shit out Camilla. there. Camilla. That's they, my shit. They went and took nothing up north to, you know, St. Nick Projects in Harlem. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Where my mom's is from. From Camilla to New York? Yes. That's crazy. You know what I mean? Moved to the city of New York. And then um, and my, I got both my parents, though. I got my, my moms and my pops. They've been together over 40 years, married. That's so. Congratulations. I, yeah, you know what I'm saying? My family background is, is, is solid. I had a lot of love in the house, you know what I'm saying? And older sister, older brother, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I had two fathers, do too, because like my, my brother was like just like my dad at a young age. So even when my dad wasn't home, like I had, I had a lot of. That's why I stand. Your on brother my, would snitch on you. It wasn't a snitch thing. He he, he would hold me accountable without mm. having to go to my dad. Mm. It wasn't a snitch thing. It was like a a dad ain't here, but we ain't, I'm not playing this. Put this back where you got it from. Right, Clean right. this shit up. We sharing the room. Like don't be doing this shit. I'm like my pop. My brother was on that. So right. yeah, it was, it was more so like that. Like I got a real. We didn't have a lot of money. We, you know what I mean? My parents struggled a lot, living check to check, and did what they could for the family shit, but. Family background is cool, like it's real solid. Like, and that was one of my one of my things I wanted to do was get older and kind of like you know get my family out of that you know struggle hole. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nah, in fact, see, my, my pops was never around like that though. Like, mm. I would see him. I remember when I was real little. I don't know like what the custody arrangement was, mm. but I would see him like every other weekend in Cali before I moved to New York. Mm. So when I was real little, so from like zero to nine. I would see my pops like that. And I didn't really know much about him. When I was with him, he'd be hella quiet. My mom told me he was a Jehovah's Witness, mm. so he didn't really cuss like that. Right. He never showed up on birthdays or Christmas or nothing like that because mm. Jehovah's Witness, they don't really believe in that type of shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and my mom was always working her ass off two, three you jobs. Asked why? Not to get on your business. Nah, I never, um, I never had that opportunity, really. Why? So I moved to New York when I was nine, like I said. Right. My dad came and saw me. That first year in New York, mm. and I've never seen my dad since. Damn. I haven't seen my dad in- Some Tyler Lake Night shit. Facts. <laughs> For real, though. But yeah, so I have it. I remember I, I, I got his number from like a half-sister I have in like 2018, and mm. I chopped it up with him. And that was my first time speaking to him in 18 years. How was that vibe? It wasn't that bad for real, cause I'm not. A I don't have a lot of guilt or like you did this to me in my childhood. Like I don't have that. Hmm, no trauma. You know what I'm saying? I don't. Yeah, I don't have. I, I, at least I feel like something built in though. I feel like we've had talks where yeah, it's, yeah, it's, no. It's so deep. I will say, getting older now, I see where like, as a man, like you know, my mom was a marine and shit too, so my mom didn't play no games. Mm. And like, you think your mom could kind of do everything, but when you get older as a man, like you realize the areas where mm. like, oh. She couldn't do this. She couldn't fix this. She right. couldn't give me confidence in this field, or she right. couldn't. And I see like 
even like with you and your son, or even like you might notice it. You might notice the kids like when mm. you go into man man's games and stuff like that. But yep. like, like though, though a lot of times it be like, even my friends, the ones that grew up in complete households, mm -hmm. the, like the homeboys I got that grew up with they pops, what? they do got a something different to them. Mm. Sometimes that I see that I'm like, no, I don't have that, or yeah. I had to develop it. Yeah, I had to find it elsewhere because. My my dad wasn't coaching the T ball team when I was little, right. instilling confidence in me and <laughs> right. moving up the ranks with me. Right. And I don't I didn't really have that or whatever. You know mm. what I'm saying? But but yeah, my mom, you know, she worked her ass off. We never really knew like, you know, that we that like she what she was going through or that she was struggling and whatnot. I'm the youngest. Mm. I got a a, mm. a older sister and an older brother or whatever. Older sister? Older sister. Single? Watch your fucking mouth. <laughs> um this crazy is too. <laughs> do, my, hold on, do you have a hookup? A friend with a sister? You ever been through that? I have. Like like a friend, one yeah. of your friends talking to your sister? Yeah, absolutely. How was that? He's not my friend no more. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 not nah, it happened. You know what's crazy too? Yo. That's crazy. For real though, like, um <laughs> but nah, like legit though, like literally this is someone that I was like best friends with. Y'all fell off because of the situation with sis or on some other shit? Yeah, but it but it because of sis, but it was like by default though. It was mm. like on some shit where like you know, basically, he came to me like a man, though. Like, right. yo, I kind of want to talk to your sister. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Right. And my sister came to me on the same type of time. And I was like, bro, I'm going to let you know. I, I kept it real with both of them. Right. My sister's name is Cassie. I told right. Cassie, I was like, bro. Hey, Cassie. Sorry. <laughs> uh, fuck your mother. <laughs> I, I told Cassie, I was like, bro, he's never been faithful to a single woman in his fucking oh, life. Yeah. Oh, is, is that? Damn, can you do that? I did it. Yeah, my I, sister. What you think, P? It's my sister, What bro. you think about that? It's my sister. I gotta, I gotta prep her. I wonder how that works. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you though. So yeah, I, yeah, you do gotta, you do gotta I get gotta that prep up on sis, bro. That's not telling, huh? No, I gotta prep Damn. sis. It's blood, bro. Yeah. It's blood, bro. I gotta prep sis. So I told her like he'd never been faithful to a single girl. Mm. I know you kind of like, oh my god, you know. Mm. What? She was like pressed over, bro. Quick for like a relationship, or they were just gonna start knocking boots when he spent the night over some. Both joke. type of shit. Okay. So. And I'm telling DJ, like, bro, that's my sister, bro. I know how you is with these women. Like, don't play around with my sister like that. Right. Next thing you know, start slapping dicks and bumping meats. Right. She ends up pregnant. <laughs> By him? Yes. Damn. Facts. And Keeps she, it? And she's keeping it. Oh. So, whatever. Neither he nor that. She had it? Right, had it. That's my niece, Charlie. I have a niece, Charlie, from my sister. That's that's. Is he a good father? Bingo. So... That that became the predicament though. There there was mm. so much heat in the beginning. Mm. He ended up like she was in South Carolina. He wanted to move back to Florida. He leaves, moves to Florida. Yeah. So it's like now all of a sudden like, and I'm not in the relationship. I don't fucking know what's going on, right. but I just know he's not around. And mm. my my mom and sisters, they're painting him to be this deadbeat. And yeah, and da -da -da. And, 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 that's, so, and that's how y'all fell off. So now it's like in hindsight, you kind of they're, they're putting all this pressure with, on me. Like, how dare you fuck with him? He's yeah. a da 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 da. And it's mm -hmm. like I don't even know what's what for real, but it's fam at the end of the day. Yeah. So by default, this is someone that like this was like a everyday motherfucker too, mm -hmm. like a day one mother. When right. I moved to South Carolina, I didn't know nobody out there. Right. And he was from Newburgh. Like, mm. kind of upstate, and I was from Poughkeepsie, which is right, right by there. Right. So we became cool right away in South Carolina because we was from New York. That was our bond or whatever. Right. And then, yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's real. You know what's funny, though? That's an open subject because it's like I got homies where they got sisters, and they might be like, because they might think that I'm, like, promiscuous or some shit like that. So, like, it's an absolute no. Like, their sister can never talk to me. Yeah, I would never but, let my sister talk to you. No? No. Damn, Casey. Cassie. Cassie? And that's th that right there. You All don't right. even care enough to say her fucking name. Right. <laughs> Son no, of a bitch. No, I'm saying like the code is like, I got an older sister, so the, the 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 age difference is too big. But I got like a cousin, like a lot of niggas look at my cousin. And, and What's I her name? You know my cousin. Oh, no, you know, I, you know, I you do know, know your cousin. But um, Better than but, you think. Sorry. No, I'm just We're not doing that. Okay. But, but, but I always say like, because I know how protective I am of her, but I always tell like motherfuckers when they want to get to talking and flirting with her, like I don't jump in it. I just tell niggas off the rip like, yo, like, if I know you, I'm gonna tell my cousin if she interested, right? Well, she probably won't be, but I'm saying I'm gonna tell her or two, don't put your hands on her. And if y'all ever get into it, keep me in mind. Simple. And and and, and if she decides to talk to you, like you know, if she decides to talk, I'm not gonna jump in like, oh, you can't talk to my cousin or my sister right. because of this. I all I ask is that you do not put your hands on her. And if y'all start getting into it, give her the benefit of the doubt for me. But like, what about like, let's take me for example. Let's say. 
the Siree residence, it's raining. The thermostat's cut all the way up to 82. <laughs> Steamy. You come home. You've uh-huh. been playing basketball. You know you play in sick, different, special needs basketball leagues. For so. And, you know, mm-hmm. we're on the bad foot doing the good thing in the living room when you come in the house. Me and cuz. Oh. Me and cuzzo. Uh, Are you mad? Like, do, do Okay, do you feel a way because I'm white? First, first of all, this is a hypothetical cousin. This is this is not a hypothetical situation about my actual cousin. No, this really happened. No, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm saying, Yo. but okay, hypothetically, um, how do you feel? Do you do you care about like? Because I know you don't you don't nah. be on the same racial shit that other motherfuckers. Like, do you care about like if your cousin dated a white guy or something like that? Nah, nah I prefer to be a brother though. You like chocolate? I don't like it. I'm just saying, you don't like, like it. It. let's keep it black. Okay. You know what I mean? You don't want it to fuck up the uh Let's keep it the recipe. Uh, I mean, you get you get sisters, so I don't be hating or nothing. I do I do give her that five second look where I'm like, you sell out. Really? Yeah. But you know me, I'm a good guy though. I'm old you, school. You are, but it's it's just that little that little moment where I'm just like But maybe that's But I, but I, I don't care though. Well you clearly saying, you just fucking said something. Nah, I see my my brother's in an interracial um relationship with yeah. she, she's Hispanic. How close but, are you guys? Um, no, nah, that's my, that's big bro. No, I'm for sure. I'm but saying. I'm just saying. Also, but if they're coming to me, maybe that should be indicative of you guys. Yeah, are I'm, slacking. I'm not tripping, but it's it's all <laughs> right. It's always that moment, though. Right. We, we, we are though. A lot of women complain about stuff like that. Yeah, that's good. Shout out to Cuzzo. <laughs> <laughs> um, this nigga's a dickhead. <laughs> Yo, what are dickhead. um, what are some of your hobbies, bro? Hobbies? Yeah, man. Hmm. I mean, I work a lot, bro. Work, family, um, probably basketball, gym. I don't really get into too much. I, I kind of stay on task a lot, bro. Like, I don't really got a lot of What's hobbies. something like, fuck all that, though. What, what's something that you get enjoyment out of that most people don't know about you, though? Don't know about me? Yeah, like like food and basketball and sports. Like no. I feel like they know that, though, about you with I basketball and a, shit. I swear to God, I'm an open book, bro. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, like, like okay, for one, I know you, you really fuck with classic movies. Oh, you're talking about like movies? Is that a hobby? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I fucking, yeah, yeah. I love movies. Like, I feel like movie movies. Kind of sure. Yeah, that like, well, both of us, but you specifically, I feel like that, like, you like you don't just go to a movie on some, oh, I'm seeing the new Transformers. Nah. Like, you go to a movie that's about some shit, talking about some shit, and you take away. I dig in everything. I want to know yeah. when they shot it, where they shot it, who's the director, who did the screenplay, did Hans Zimmer score this motherfucking film, mm. did Ben Affleck and. Fucking, you know, uh, was, was Matt Damon write this shit from a story originated in Southie Boston and why Goodwill Hunting with? I'm finding out all that. Like, I'm in the movies. Is this movie a, a prequel to the sequel to the trilogy? Like, I, I look up all of that when it comes to film. So, when I get to talk about films, yeah, I do. That is one of my hobbies. Movies, good point though. Yeah. Hooping. I thought like people don't know that about you. Wait, and yeah, they it, probably don't though. Cause I, cause I can't talk to people about a lot of people about movies, not this generation. They suck at that. Do you feel like it's tough for women? With what? Like women, I don't know a lot of I don't know a lot of women that are movie j- buffs. They think they are though. But Bro, they like trash ass shit. They like trash shit. They always want to watch some horror movie with a horrible plot. And I'm not mad at it. I, I'm put, upset about I it. I don't put horror movies on to enjoy the movie. Let, let's be honest. Yeah. I'll protect you. <laughs> yeah, like ladies, let's not act like when niggas agree to watch a horror film, it's not because we're about to see this Oscar winning performance. Yeah. It's because you're about to get scared. I ain't hit yet, and I want I want you to grab me. You ever been watching a up. movie with a shorty, mm-hmm. and then you fucked around and found out you was interested in the movie, and y'all started getting it popping, and maybe you wasn't as involved or like reactionary or mm. to what the movie or her or to her because you was kind of like, damn. I be trying to watch movies though, but now it's like that's hilarious. Like now, bro, I, I can't watch movies at night no more. I lost that. I fall asleep. Mm. I can't watch movies. I can't in my go room. to the movies at night. It's a dub. Nah, it's a dub. Yeah, I'm. I can do. A, I could do a movie in the crib, maybe on the couch or something. But if I go to a movie theater at night, especially now they just recline. Too comfortable. The, yeah. What the fuck is that? Love Come seat on. shit. Yeah, I'm yeah, falling asleep them, they, in the movie theater. They need to go back to the small seats. Yeah, them, 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 them shits that when you get up they go right. They, they them shits flop back up. For real. <laughs> and you you piss me off with this. Go ahead. By the way, because I feel like you fair weather type shit, but. Favorite sport? Basketball. basketball. Ain't nothing better than basketball. Basketball, jinx. You What's your me? favorite fucking sport? Football. But teams. 
In what sport? I'm just saying. I feel like basketball I'm, first. I'm be honest. Football second, boxing that's, third. I, I'm saying, but as stand up as you are, I feel like you're not really loyal to a team, though. Can we be can we be honest about loyalty? I'm I'm sick of that. Oh, good to know. So by default, to my basketball right now, whatever. I was born a Knicks fan. My parent, my whole family going. For, I'm from the Bronx. I'm still a Knicks fan. You notice know about me? I was too. 27 and 17. I'm not saying I left after Patrick Ewing and Mr. Layup. And Charles Oakley, Charlie Ward, Chris Childs, Allen Houston, Latrell Sprewell. Come on, John Starks. Don't Allen Houston? Yes, my nigga. Amazing. Great time. I'm a Knicks fan. It just what happened was, and I was still rooting for the Knicks when we had Melo, Shump, J.R., all them niggas. When I saw, first of all, when I saw Charles Oakley get grabbed by mm. fucking two security guards and thrown out the garden, that's when I was like, and we, and we suck, by the way. Facts. That broke my heart for real. When I when I found out that the legends of the Knicks don't fuck with the Knicks because of what the owners and yeah. shit was doing at, to them at the Garden. Worst owner in the league, by it, the way. And, and, and I'm, I'm not going to lie. I left a little bit before that, but I left because of Kobe. When Kobe came, I was still rooting for the Knicks, but they, wasn't, they weren't even in the playoffs. I got to do something. Yeah. When Kobe came into the league, I, he was my, you know, joy. I, Kobe's don't, my goat. Don't hate the player, hate the game. You follow players. Yeah, like, so Kobe was my guy. You know, when, because my age demographic, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't Jordan, Elijah Wan. It wasn't dumb niggas. I was too young to understand same, basketball. Same. For me, it was, a, it was AI, Vince Carter, mm. you know, uh, 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 Shaq, Kobe, Steve Francis. Like, these was the niggas for me in my age. So for me, at that time, it was Kobe. So it wasn't that I wasn't rooting for the Knicks. It's just that Kobe was the man. I'm not even a Laker fan because when Kobe left, I went straight to rooting for Kawhi Leonard and Steph Curry. So, so, so you, so you die hard Knicks, regardless of how much they lose, regardless of. I, I mean, I ain't mad at that. Yeah, but you know what's crazy? I always was infatuated with all those players you're talking about, but I, I always felt the need to cling to like a mm. a home base. But I, I feel you though. I was a huge AI I fan. I was the little white kid that went to my mom and was like, "Mom, can I get my hair like that?" And she was like, "No." So it wasn't about Philly. No, it wasn't. I was still a Knicks fan, but I was so enamored with the figure, the personality. I don't say all the niggas that root for LeBron has played for seventeen teams, so they don't have to stay with Cleveland or LA or. I don't really. Right, but LeBron could come to the Knicks and leave, and I'm still a Knicks fan. You see what I'm saying? Oh, That's yeah. the difference. Okay, but, I see and you know, you know, it's crazy. Like, cause Carmelo Anthony's my favorite player of all time. But, but that was I was repping the Knicks when mm -hmm. Melo came in and went yeah. to the, was on the Nuggets. Yeah. But I was just so like when they robbed him and didn't give him Rookie of the Year. Right. But they gave it to Bron. We don't got to talk about it. Right. But I'm talking about it. I'm still <laughs> pissed off about it. Right. Because he took his team to the playoffs and LeBron didn't. Mm. But they didn't, didn't get. They, yeah, they didn't give him Rookie of the Year, but they gave it to Bron. Mm. And their stats were like identical, but Melo went to the playoffs. Mm. I commend that loyalty though. But I'm gonna tell you this though. When the Knicks get get like that, I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna be one you of them. Come niggas. back. I'm acting like I never left. I did it with the Braves. That's awesome though. I did it with the Braves when they came to Cobb. Bro, one of my like lifelong. I gotta sit courtside at the garden, yeah, the garden. before I. How much is that? Can we fact check how much it costs for a courtside seat at the? No, it's five thousand. It's more than that. It's gotta be more than that. What game? You could talk Damn. too. By the way, I don't forget. <laughs> Damn, son. Of God. Damn. Like regular mm. season type shit. Mmm. Woo. Damn. Yeah, I need that. We're going to be there. We're going. Yeah, yeah. I I'm, I'm, I'll make it a birthday gift for you one day, bro. I'm going to surprise you. Salute. Now, they might be playing the Pistons. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you know so You still going? You still yeah. lit? Fuck yeah. All right. Because you know the garden is eating, bro. Like, right. it's lit. The celebrity right. role at the garden, it's like Ben Stiller's out there. Yeah. Matt, De you. whoever the fuck you can think about. They, yeah. they, 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 it's a who's who for right. sure. Say less. That's a bit. Thank God. Praise God. About yeah, time. Man, dickhead. Yeah, yeah. That, Shit face. That needs that. Oh, this is a good one. What's, what's like your biggest pet peeve? <sighs> pet peeve? Bad energy, bro. Nigga, I can't stand bad energy. Like, bro, a good one. bad, and we get like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, bro, the the vibe bad, I get the fuck on. I'm not, nothing can make me, bro, you can't pay me to be around bad vibes. I will lose money to stay around good energy, bro. Like, and I grew up around, around a lot of bad vibes, and I didn't really know that. So, bad energy is the most toxic shit. It, it, it deletes ideas. It deletes progress. It deletes love. 
it deletes peace. It mm. creates war. Mm. Bad energy is the bro. It's the you can't make money doing it either. Facts. And, and if you make money within bad energy, it goes away fast too. Mm. Bad energy is the worst fucking shit ever. And if you have that around me, I will not fuck with you, oh, bro. I'm telling the smallest inch of it too. Pause. <laughs> I'm talking about I, I can't stand it. What's your pet beef? I don't know. That's a good one, though. I, I feel like it was one of yours, too. That's a universal standard for me to where I don't even consider it a pet peeve. It's just like, mm. that's just a thing. And then you know what else is like pisses me off? This might mm. be a pet peeve. I hate the motherfuckers that talk about energy. Like, they have such a nose for it. Mm. And they don't, for real, though. Half mm. the motherfuckers they hang around got bad energy. Facts. But, but they be talking about, oh, I don't fuck with motherfuckers with bad energy. That's a good fucking point. Because, like, a lot of motherfuckers that mention energy still be... they When bad energy happens... They don't react to it like they hate it. I do, we do though, right? You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm, bro. And everybody that I see successful reacts over the top for bad energy, mm. bro. I'm gonna tell you a true. I'm gonna tell you a true story before we get to the next question, right? I had a video shoot in the Bluff in Atlanta, right? Mm. Me, Birdman, and Money Man. This is like three in the morning. We had a tour bus out there, everything. But keep in mind, I didn't even have my Airbnb over there yet. Mm. Fucking, we about to shoot. Money man there, bro. We setting up. It's taking too long to set up. You know what I mean? We about to, uh, my nigga Dante about to set up the camera and all that shit. Bro, some kids keep on walking back and forth. As soon as they noticed that Bird was there, and they was like, oh, shit, Bird. <laughs> he ain't want all that energy like that. He ain't want all that people knowing where he was right. in the middle of another nigga hood. So he telling them niggas, hey, man, hurry up. He, like, I seen one nigga, like, pass a pistol to another nigga just to make sure that, like, on Bird team, like, yo, make sure oh, that, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Just keep your eye on alert. And, uh... Bro, I swear to God, right by the time we was about to shoot, I turned around, Bird was gone. He's not in that video. It's just me. He talking on the song. Yeah, yeah. But it's just me and Money. Me and Money Man was still there, but it was just like, he got the, he did that shit to me a lot too, though. And that was one of the biggest things that we talk about is like how we enter and how quick we exit. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I think bad energy, like in order to succeed, you got to know when to get the fuck up out of there. And a lot of people that like, to your, to your point. It's like they still be sticking around, bro, even when they irritated. Facts. You know what I mean? But yeah, you can go to the next joint. <laughs> nah, that's that's a fact though, for sure. And there's been many a times though, like we don't really step out too much as far as like club wise and lounge wise. Mm -hmm. But I've seen those Anymore. moments. Right. I've yeah. seen those moments and those nights where we have, and like it seems like the climax of the night, and we're rounding everybody up. Oh yeah. Like let's go. But you see those looks what, get exchanged. What do we do when, when it's time for me to leave? What do I do with my hand? <laughs> right. What do I do with my hand, bro? Exactly. Right. <laughs> and, 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 bro, when y'all out mobbing with your, with your team, you got to you gotta know where the exit is at, and you got to know, everybody got to know, when we leave, we all leave. Facts. We all leave. But I've seen those looks get exchanged, you know, especially oh, yeah. when with oh, females and whatnot. It's about that time. But you see those looks get exchanged of like, why are we, we're da -da 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 -da. It's that, ain't just your, that ain't your call, <laughs> yeah, It's not your call. Nigga, it's <laughs> time to go. Get the sprinter, pull that bitch up to the front. Like, it's bad energy in this motherfucker, for sure. All right, if you weren't gay and you could have one superpower. <laughs> that ain't that bad. No, but no, if you could have one superpower, Yo, what would it be? Superpower? Oh, this fucking basic ass question. Nah, you'd have some nasty shit. You'd be like invisible, like a son of a bitch. Fuck. Um, if I could have one superpower, I'll take um one superpower. Come on. Stupid ass fucking question. I, thought, I jumped to it. I thought it was gas. You thought it was gas? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'll probably have um the 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 power to bring back life, to revive. Damn. Does anybody have that? I don't think a superhero has that. Do they? Jesus? Maybe, yeah. You'd be Jesus. Yeah. I, I, I would like to revive, man. That's the only thing. I, I think I don't fear nothing but life, bro. Like death from people. Not even my death, though, but like. People I love. Yeah. Uh, I think about, and you know how fearless I am about shit, bro. I don't fear nothing else. But it's like the one thing I fear, bro, is like losing somebody close to me that I love. Yeah, yeah. So the only power I would, I don't give a fuck about flying, fireballs, creating snow with my hands, money. <laughs> bro, I literally, bro, would like to. Damn, you just fucked up my shit, though, because now I feel like I can't even pick a joint. You want to do all that shit, don't you? I mean, child. I wasn't thinking about resurrect my wrist. Resurrect people from the dead and fuck them. I wasn't thinking about that. <laughs> What's your superpower, bro? I think I'd teleport. That's what I'm saying. See, you, I ain't with all that. What do you shit. mean? Let's what? say you're in danger. We're outside somewhere at night. Someone's trying to rape you. Which happens? 
<laughs> I grab onto you. I think about Paris, and like that, we're at the Eiffel Tower. Just like that. Yeah. And now you're out you of harm's way. Yeah, you could have that teleport. So that'd be cool. I don't need to resurrect people if I never put them in harm's way in the fucking first place. So you think about leaving tough situations? You pussy, basically. No, no, no. Sweet. Well, because no niggas, when niggas like me, when, 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 when the going get tough, we stand in there. We ain't. We're not. Yeah, but teleport. to your point, at the club, you got to know when to fucking leave, though. It's teleport is. Birdman it's left. Is Birdman pussy? Nah, hmm. smart. Exactly. Smart. And that's how I like smart. to feel about myself. Okay, so that's... <laughs> smart. <laughs> Say less. Um, Say less. That's a fact. Tell Yo, is crazy. What are your vices? Damn. We doing Killed this? you. Oh, we're, doing, we're doing this? Dive in head first. Skinny dipping, boys. Vices? I'll probably say being around women. I'm going to be honest. Being around women in like certain foods, like bad foods. It's a lot of bad foods that I really enjoy. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not gonna let you do that on the first part. You tried yeah. to fucking what, Jedi leader, mind trick girls? over that shit. Nah, what, not just being around. What about women in particular? I love women. Mm. I don't think I'm a nympho though. You're a nympho. You think I'm a nympho? Yeah. I don't think what what is a nympho? Let me not say I'm not something I mean, that I don't know what it is. Vaguely, a nympho, I think, is like a sex addict. I'm not a sex addict. You're full of shit. I'm 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 gonna say I Watch love, this. I love sex this. like any everybody in this room. Watch this. Okay, good. When's the last time you've gone a week without sex? I do it a lot when my daughter's around. That don't count. Why? Because she's cover she's the band-aid for your vice. Yeah, but free I, will. When is the when okay. is the time daughter's not in town, nothing? Free will. Second question to that. Why am I not fucking? Because of simply... Why the I, fuck am I not fucking for I think in like, one thing for me personally, not just pertaining to sex, different topics, there's a lot of power in saying no sometimes. Nah, I feel like... So I, I, I feel, feel like... like I my feel, week could be another nigga's like, year, I, though. I was listening to someone one time, they was talking about this. Oh, shit. They was talking about alcoholism <laughs> or smoking or something. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is just knowing that you can say no. A lot of it is just knowing. That's the I, thing. I say no. Yo, what if I said no to seven people but still had one left? No. And didn't have sex. I'm saying you. So what if I'm you, saying no seven times and you're just saying no one time and you didn't have sex? No. But I, has, I said no seven times and on the eighth one I said yes and had sex. It don't work like that. I'm just asking. I'm telling you. I'm not. I'm not addicted. I'm gonna tell you why I'm not addicted. I feel like if you're an addict, I feel like if you're addicted, you're you're doing it so bad you're missing out on rent. You no. put the book. Whoa. You ever you heard the term? Freakers? You ever heard the term functioning alcoholic? Okay, I'll give you that. So I'm a functioning yes, sex addict. Yes, I got. I got to look into it. Because at the end of the day, if you never shut it off, how do you know? I do shut it off. You don't shut it off. I didn't have sex today. Good. And I won't. But you have a week though. You want to make a bet? What? We'll make a bet on the show one episode. Yeah, let's do it now. But how long? How long I can go without doing it? But don't make it too long. Yeah, a week. Yeah, hey, that's easy work. Seven days. We'll talk about it. Or a business week. We'll go there. We're we'll gonna make it a bet. All right. Wait, lot of. Fuck you. <laughs> um, favorite porn star of all time? No, you first. Uh, you first on this one. I, I feel like you you watch more porn than me in the past. What's your favorite porn star of all time? Male or female? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm just, <laughs> no, I'm just fucking with you, but. Female, um, bro. Yeah, I mean, obviously. But no, um <laughs> All I, time? Yeah. Porn star. All you know what's time. crazy? Side note, fun fact, in my personal life, mm -hmm. I've like I've I've tried to like, you know what I'm saying? I'm on some like hmm. no porn, no beating off right now. I think it's bad. I ain't talking about right now. I think it's bad for you. But that's a, we'll nah, get in, we'll get into that. Uh, yeah, it's been a minute, but I'm just saying yeah, like, well, all you time did it, you did porn it star. The greatest to you, the GOAT. In your opinion. Can I, can I name more than one or no? No. I'll give you one with an honorable mention. Okay. I mean, let's be honest. We know what time period we grew up in. Mm -hmm. I'm going Cherokee. Damn. And I could I could have went pinky. I could have went a lot of directions. Great one. But I wasn't, I didn't have like a, mm. yeah, I, I'm from that era though. Mm. I, that's the era I'm from. I'll tell you, I'm, like, I'm, I'm, like I'm from that. that era, bro. I'm from that era of when I saw that D ass tattoo for the first time. So nice. And that shit moving. That wave. The wave. And she was like, hello. And I was on the other side of the computer. Hi. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cherokee. Yeah. On, the, on the home PC I'll while moms will sleep. Yeah, I'll get you Cherokee. Cherokee, bro. Cherokee. It was going crazy. And don't get me wrong, I loved Pinky. 
I mm. get it. But it, like, I feel like Pinky was a lot of people's, but Cherokee was. I was. I was loyal Pinky to Cherokee, mine. bro. That's crazy. Pinky mine. I was loyal to Cherokee, bro. But Cherokee mine too, though. It's, Yo, it's a top. Can I be honest with you? Neither one of them really sucked a crazy dick like that. You got your motherfucking mind. Cherokee didn't. Cherokee didn't. Ch- Cherokee didn't. Pinky did. Pinky was solid. Pinky was amazing. She was solid. Bro. Once some of those more uh, well endowed brothers started coming along, like Rico Strong. She didn't go all the way down. She just, she started getting cooked. Yeah. yeah that's a but fact. she would have had a great time with me. Per se. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but no. But yeah, I was Cherokee all Hello. day, bro. Now I'm, I'm gonna take Cherokee on a one-on-one. On a one-on-one, she's the GOAT as far as like her with one dude. There used to be this chick named Nautica. I really fucked with I ain't seen Nautica. I could just mm. was doing that. How? Before I was Damn. really peeping that. Cause Cherokee would bounce that shit, but but and then but no, there was this joint. Do you remember a joint named uh-huh. Vanessa Blue? No. Vanessa Blue See, was this chocolate joint. You got all of them. With a fucking, Damn, she make Vanessa your Blue. whole shit disappear. How you feel about Tiana Trump? I love her. That was past my time. No, no, it was though. But but she make a nigga want to go back and check her shit out. For yeah, real, by the I ain't time, seen all her shit. By though, the but. time I started really seeing all that shit, right. I just wasn't. I wasn't into Tiana like that. Cold though. Go back though. Go back and watch. No, I peeped. Jeez. She's a savage. But I really wasn't into. Mm. By the time Tiana was popping, I was a fucking Neanderthal. Right. In the right. sense of like. <laughs> By the time Tiana Trump started popping, I wasn't into porn stars no more. Right, right, right. Same. Like, I don't know about everybody Same. else. Like, Same. when I do watch porn now, it's not, I'm so broken as yeah. a fucking man. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's over. It's not even what I'm interested it's anymore. It's over, though. I've seen, like, seen Tiana by When I watch porn the, now, yeah. it's like fucking crackhead granny gagging on cock outside right. of a Texaco. <laughs> right. It, it's not even right. some shit that I like. Right, right. For it, it, it's not like a it's name wild. anymore. It's yeah. not Cherokee. It's not Pinky. It's not it Tiana Trump. It's like the camera footage is shaky. Right. It's some real life shit now. No, nah, real shit though. That's a fact though. How are you? How are you with amateur videos? Like, what I you like mean? those. Like, like the them homemade joints. Yeah, yeah. On facts. Twitter. That's what I'm saying. That's It'll what, be on Twitter by accident. Twitter? Yeah, Twitter's crazy. Twitter's the under, like that dark world of Twitter is bananas. Yeah, Twitter horn. Twitter horn. Find some shit. shit on there. You run into like your cousin's film or something. Nah, not your cousin. Right. But I'm saying that's a fact. We didn't film that day. <laughs> But I'm saying anyone's cousin. That's a fact. Run into he, go, he gonna run that shit to the ground. I'm just trying. <laughs> no, cousin, cousin gonna hit you like. No, Yo. I love I love hey, Cuzzo. I've no, never. Sure. I would never. <laughs> um, yo, <laughs> one thing I feel like it don't get talked about enough, even between us, like me and you, like I feel like the elephant in the room with you, you and me. That's mm. not really the elephant in the room with you and me. Is the whole like the black white thing. The like the di- I'm saying like the dynamic. You're black. I'm white. Correct. But I'm That's saying like. When we're just hanging out, we don't ever talk about it, per se. It's not like a... No, we make jokes, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we make kinda... a lot of racial slurs. More, yeah, more sure. you than me. We make a lot you of racial jokes. So? Yeah. Well, like, yeah. more, more. you make more black jokes than I might do white jokes. I might do a but few But white jokes is kind of corny, though. Y'all only yeah. got so many. It's just not as fun. So you saying y'all got a lot to use on us? Yeah, I'm sorry. Right, that's fine. You yeah. got it. But I say that to say, as two motherfuckers that... Mm-hmm walk that line perfectly fine you know right. what i'm saying what what are like things that you think that like within those interactions whether you cool with a motherfucker or not that like blacks and whites alike can work to like do better on like what can what can hmm. like with within that balance what's something of, i want white people to improve on yeah yeah, yeah for sure <laughs> white people to improve on cooking seasoning food Bro, you know where I'm going with this. Stop playing. What, what's up with it? Talk to me. We all know that <laughs> white people don't fucking season. We we know how bland y'all food be. Hold on. Just tell us. <laughs> when your mom was in there doing her supper one too. My mom's nasty with it though. I'm not saying she not. She's Italian. All right, all right, all right. Listen, your mom, a white a white person that's that's not that good at seasoning. Right, right. Do they? Do y'all ever? Do y'all ever say it to them? Like, do, do y'all ever be like? Yo, do it like the blacks just today in the kitchen. Nah, we do, don't, do y'all ever discuss that? We don't think about it, and I'm gonna tell you why. Why? I'm gonna tell you why. Something goes out the window when a white person's cooking, <laughs> where they just read the instructions, mm. and then like they're so focused on like, okay, it says two tablespoons of this. Oh, y'all follow and, that? Like when a motherfucker don't know, that's how that's how they're learning to do it. Mm. So and in that process, nothing extra gets added because they just follow that list of instructions. Right. And they go, Oh, I made flank steak. <laughs> so, so that that's how that shit ends up like that. In my opinion. 
My mom's like full Italian, basically though. So no, I'm, so oh, some no, people can cook. Some no, no. So, so I'm just saying, like, right. she was throwing the fuck down. I was eating all sorts of homemade shit growing right. up, and was always like, "Damn, this is, is busting." Right. But it'd be little shit with y'all too, though. Y'all fuck some y'all? shit up, though. Y'all, as a race, black okay. people. Gotcha. Y'all will fuck mm-hmm. some shit up, though, in the sense of like, I mean, you know, that's, heart disease has been killing y'all for a while now. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Y'all again, well, but. I say that to say, like, even like when I watch how y'all make ramen, good or bad, like you're saying, it's, good. It, it's good, but it's like, God, damn. unhealthy. I'm saying, like, how do, you, like, what do you put in your ramen? Like, I hook my, sh- I, I can, I mean, I'm saying, like, you're making ramen noodles right and now, and I got time. Yeah. Shh, what, what's what? What all goes in it? Because I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get. Uh, first of all, I'm straight chicken flavor. I don't fuck with the Oriental. Okay. I don't eat the beef one, and I'm, the shrimp one got too much twang to it. Okay. Chicken flavor. I, I do. I like it on the stove and the microwave. I could do both. I do. Put microwave. it on there. You know what I'm saying? I, I put the pack in that come with it. Yeah. Then I get the all-purpose seasoning. Then I throw some butter in there. Wait, wait, wait. All-purpose seasoning, like separate in the, in the separate. can thing? Yep. Not mm-hmm. in the can, like in the little seasoning bottle yeah. thing. Hot sauce. Um, yeah, see, we don't do this. Butter. That, that's a problem. I might, If I got time, I might throw some egg. If I got meat in there, pause, that I might have in the freezer, some, some old fish frozen. or some ch- Like I might heat up a piece of chicken, throw it in there too. We... Black people hook shit up. We make diamonds out of nothing. I mean, y'all made us do that. Y'all made us get creative when we didn't have shit. So that's what it is. It, don't sit here and act like motherfuckers so just... But, we got Raymond at the same time with the same opportunity. We had no choice. On this topic of things we could do better, I feel like accountability on your end. Because <laughs> how we come back to ramen is our fault. No, I'm saying when you ask us why we do so much, mm-hmm. it's because we didn't have... We didn't. May, 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 right. We might have had to eat ramen three days in a row. So that first day we could eat it how y'all eat it. Right. The second day, I'm like, all right, nigga, this shit getting. I'm eating the same shit. Right. Let me not feel like I'm eating the same thing. Now I'm about to add some hot. So then sauce. you started stealing our fucking seasonings. <laughs> you know what I mean? We gotta yeah. throw some shit in there. The third day, you know what I'm saying? My mom's might have made something on a different day. My mom's might have cooked something and might just have a leftover chicken breast from the old meal that she had. So I might take that last chicken breast, chop that joint up, throw it into the noodles. Now that shit fired. Now I feel like a real entree. Mm-hmm. It just you gotta get creative with what you got when you black. It's not we blaming y'all. It's like that's what I mean. Same way hip hop created, my nigga. We had to make something. Yeah, you know what I mean. I think y'all just y'all are known for being like very creative. Yeah, yeah. We make we make diamonds out of nothing. But it's not even just creative though. It's like s- stereotypes and some of them that are good stereotypes. Yeah. Like I feel like this is a good stereotype about black people: the seasoning yeah. of food and shit like that. Even yeah. like. Uh, the person in society that can dance or or can mm. dance is normally right. a black person, or you know what mm. I'm saying. Like, right. so I I feel like not all of these things are bad things, but the season thing, yeah. I apologize on behalf of the white community. That's you cool, know what man. I'm saying. I don't I don't really eat a lot of white shit for real. Yeah, because I don't ever cook for you. You don't. No, I'm I'm I will say this to the white. Woman. But you've passed me down some good recipes. I've cooked for you. I cook for people. I fuck. Nah, facts. But I'm saying for you sure. gave me whose mac and cheese recipe is that? My mom's. Crazy. And then I added my little one. I pull that shit out when I go to fucking. Yeah, my, my Mac recipe is Cathedra's fire. house. Yeah. And that shit. <laughs> that shit's Mac. Oh, yeah. I, really, yeah, I get brownie smack. points for that every time. No, for you don't want to take a white person mac and cheese. A recipe. <sighs> yeah, it's not going Bad. Be. You eat Kraft mac and cheese? Sir? Kraft. Um, when I was a kid. I hate fake, fake mac and cheese. <laughs> you sound like you said something. I else. do, bro. But I'm saying, when I was a kid, though, my mom used to do the, My mom, like, you know what I'm saying? Quick meal. She would do the Kraft mac. Hmm. And I don't know about this. Might be some white shit. I don't know. Hmm. Your your moms or whatever never like chopped up the wieners in the mac. It's crazy. Hey yo, the wieners. What you mean? The hot dogs into the mac and cheese. Yeah. No, but I like that as a good struggle meal though. Yeah. I respect it. But we, I don't think the niggas do that. The niggas do that. Hell no. That's a white struggle meal. Yeah, we would do the craft mac, and then she would take hot dogs and cut them up. Into like small pieces and mix it in with the Mac. Miss Marl, that's I, some nasty shit. I used to love that shit. That's some nasty shit. It's good. It still hit. Would you, hit it? would you do it now? Yes. Uh, if you cranked it today, I, I, ne- get, and I you would like you, it. I never seen you make it. Nah, I, I mean, yeah, it's not something I make. You know that peanut crazy? butter on pancake shit is that white people shit that, that shit that you do when you put the peanut butter on the pancakes. You know what's crazy? I've met a lot of black people that told me they do it too. Oh, so they do I don't it know. All. But I got that from mm. when I was little. My mom was with this guy for a while, and he had three boys. Black guy. White guy. Right. Continue. Um, <laughs> thank God. And I. What? 
What? <laughs> Tough crowd? Call you back? But listen, no. <laughs> I saw their kids making their pancakes one day, and they right. started putting peanut butter on. I was like, what the fuck are y'all doing? Right. Y'all are fucking that shit up. Mm. And they were like, bro, trust me. And then I started mm. doing it, and it's crazy. So to this day, when I go to Waffle House, I get a peanut butter waffle. Mm. When I'm eating pancakes, if I'm at a place and I order pancakes, I right. ask if they have peanut butter. I put peanut butter on there. I love peanut butter on my pancakes. No, it's not bad, though. It's not bad. Yeah. No, I fuck with that shit. Um, she ain't a bad bite. I'm trying to think. There's also a lot of shit, though. Even, like, a lot of dairy products, I feel like, are traditionally white. Like, you don't fuck with cottage cheese or nothing like that. Yeah. Wait, ain't cottage? No. You don't fuck with cottage cheese. Hold on. What cheese is on lasagna? That little weird mushy one. Is it ricotta or cottage? Ricotta? Ricotta. Ricotta's a little, not too much. Yeah, but ricotta's different. It don't count. I'm not a big fan of cottage cheese, though. You know, we get cottage cheese in, like, the cup from, like, the supermarket, Mm -hmm. and then we'll take, like... You know, like peaches or pineapples, and mix it in with the cottage cheese, and then we'll eat that. We ain't doing that as like a side item of breakfast. That. We ain't doing that. That's no. Where, where does where do y'all draw the line with dairy though? Like, what you mean draw the line? Like, I feel like black people have a weird relationship with dairy sometimes. It hit us different. Why? Sh- I don't know. I, but I feel like I'm lactose out of nowhere now. Like I used to be able to eat a cheese pizza with extra cheese and get away with it. Now, if I do that the next morning, my shit turning. They putting something in the food now. I think I think something's going on. Yeah, this is making y'all dunk, sure. dunk so good all the time. It's working. Y'all should eat more of it. <laughs> said dunk so good. Yeah, facts. <laughs> That's a fact. All right, we got a lot of crazy shit going on, kind of right now and whatnot. I want to get into mm. some of these current events and whatnot. That's um, a fact. We'll so be starting with that. I actually That's been waiting to get your on. get your opinion about this though. For real, it's not even that crazy for real. But I, mm. I have been wanting to get your opinion about this shit. So. Um, most deaf. Yasin hmm. Bay is that what he goes by now? Is that how you say it? Yas- so. Yasin Bay. I call him Most Deaf still. Yeah, me too. That's a great name. Most Deaf did an interview recently. Um, where uh, the Drake shit. Yeah, a woman asked him, "Is Drake hip hop?" Mm. Like she kind of that's how it was worded. She asked him, you know, just bluntly. To which he replied, "No, Drake is pop. Uh, Drake is something I expect to hear when I'm like shopping or or whatever." He said. I don't know if it was like a jab or if it was shade or if he was just, you know, being just being candid at the time. But w- what are your thoughts on someone like that? Because as we all know. I love Most Def. I love Most Def too. I love Most Def. Um, Fuck with Drake too. But, you know, Drake kind of wears many hats. You know, he does the pop. Drake music. is hip hop, bro. Mm. Let's, let's, Drake is hip hop. Okay. I think when people get to doing their opinions, First of all, I think most deaf knows better than I, th- I feel like he know better. Because and, and and correct me, I you might have to fact check me on this, but I believe the founders are uh Grandmaster Flash. It's a DJ. Grandmaster Flash and um African Bombada. Mm-hmm. And I don't the five elements of hip hop and all that, woo, 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 but it's MCing, DJing, like break dancing, graffiti, mm-hmm. and one more thing, right? All right. Bro, Drake raps. Like I I don't care if he drops a pop album. And he has one song on there rapping, emceeing. Right. He's got metaphors on there. He's telling the story. He's saying, I just went through this hotel. I just rapped. I don't care if the subject matter is not for the streets. I don't care if it's not the substance you're looking for. I don't care if he does a pop album. He has an album where he's rapping too many times. Right. So I think one of the things Most Def highlighted, too, was that hip hop at its foundation was a, a mostly conscious landscape. He's he, But... but the word conscious isn't in the definition of the five elements of hip hop. Right. To me. Right, right. I mean, I, I I done went back and read it. So in order to be hip hop, to be to do hip hop, you have to do one of the five elements of hip hop. Mm-hmm. So if a nigga went right now and was breakdancing and didn't drop a single fucking album and just broke dance all year. <laughs> He's hip hop. <laughs> Bro, dance is it, crazy. <laughs> whatever, nigga. Big <laughs> no, homie, most no. deaf. I love most deaf nah, to death. For sure. You legend, know what I'm saying? Legend. Most deaf, respectfully, if a nigga went right now and did graffiti for a year straight all over the highways and all over the walls, he's hip hop. Right. That's one of the five elements of hip hop. Right. So you cannot tell me that because this man is doing a bunch of big pop records and he's going number one and he's on pop radio. I get it. I still think I still want Drake to do a hip hop album with Alchemist all the way. We've talked about this. Yeah. I want him to do an album where he's not concerned about sales and going number one and no radio shit. He just goes all out with Alchemist, DJ Premier, Forty, and fucking Knife Wonder. I don't right. give a fuck. Like you know what I mean? 
I, we would love that because he don't need the money. And it, would that would that have to be your criteria to be con- considered hip hop? The answer is short, bro. The answer is most deaf is wrong. And why why was he chosen to be wrong? I don't know. Maybe yeah. there is a slight of he yeah, doesn't say, like he do doesn't you, like what he's doing. I, I think as successful as Drake's been, I do think from a you know certain communities within the realm of hip hop, I do think there's a little bit of backlash, a little bit of shade. That's kind of kind of like um he even though other people contributed, he kind of fully maybe shifted the genre in a direction that leans more pop, if you will, away from the traditions of the art form. And, and uh, but do you feel like most deaf is shading a little bit in that? Or do you think it's... It, one thing I don't like to speak on is a nigga intent. Right, right. I just know he he's wrong. Right, right. And, and I feel like as a, as a nigga, most deaf knows the definition of hip hop. I think he does. Bro, you do not... You cannot MC and still be hip hop. Mm. The five elements prove it. Because guess what? I MC, but I don't break dance. Right. And I don't graffiti. Right. And I don't DJ. Right. But I'm still hip hop. Right, right, right. It's a lot of niggas that don't do the other things in hip hop. Mm. You cannot tell me that Drake has never MC'd on an album. Facts. Stop it, bro. Right. I mean, I've seen him rap live, even though he was reading off his phone at one of the, um, was it Funk Flex? I don't know where it was. I've seen, he's been in battles, he's been in beefs. Right. Rapping. Held his own. Right. So that's MCing. So he's hip hop, bro. That mm. conversation's over. Whatever most Def's intent on that was, does Drake do pop as well? Yes. Right. Like, are, are we gonna say Lauren Hill? What genre was Lauren Hill's miseducation of Lauren Hill? Probably, argue, arguably, greatest album of all time. I'm saying arguably, it, it could be up there for R&B, neo soul, or hip hop. Is 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 Lauren Hill not a fucking MC? Even though the, the 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 dominance of lyrics that I see sung in the streets from all of these women that love that album and men are the singing parts. Right. Are the singing parts. All of the melodic joints, the that thing, and, and the Zion, and, and X Factor. X Factor is one of the biggest records on her album. And that record has no bars. It's all singing. Yeah. Is she not an MC? Is, are you going to have the balls to tell Lauryn Hill she's not hip-hop and her biggest album is dominated by a lot of melody right. and fewer bars. No, that's a great point. And a lot of people that love that album, they they rap along the singing parts. <laughs> but image-wise, I do think, and I think that subconscious, this is where mm-hmm. this shit plays a part. Uh huh. And and Drake's talked about this before in his music. He, you know, he said, um, I think he, he the exact quote is a uh, black excellence. But I guess with me, it's not the same though. All goody that just forced me to do the things we all couldn't. And I feel like someone's more prone to call a Lauryn Hill hip hop simply from like the aesthetic alone. Like when, when you look at, you know what I'm saying? Like that pro black sort of. Yeah, but whatever, my nigga, let's, let's, this, on our show, we, we fact check. Nah, for sure. So, so I can get into my. But say, I'm saying we live in a society where they'll clown Drake for being light skinned nah, or being from Canada. And we, and we, or being yeah, from, nah, facts. He's always going to have to deal with that because it's like, but he also doesn't have to have that street edge that he might want. Or, right. or attempt to do. I don't fucking know. Like, right. he doesn't have to do that. And the Canada thing does help. Right. That helps a little bit. Mm-hmm. Being, being, I think, is he half Jewish? I don't fucking know. Is he he's, Jewish at all? He's Jewish. That yeah. fucking helps. Yeah. I'm not saying that made him one of the greatest people of this generational time. Right. But it, this, it helps. You know what I mean? But the fact of the matter is, most death is wrong, bro. I don't give a fuck. When Drake dropped the, the pop album and everybody was mad because they wanted him to rap, man. Drake is hip hop, bro. Point blank period. Next subject. Um, yo, what 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 do you think about all the updates and everything going on with this uh, YFN Lucci case right now? Mm. It's a lot to cover in that. Yeah, uh, he got sentenced to what? What what, what was Lucci saying? Ten years. Mm-hmm. I think he got like a ten years and then like parole. Ten parole. I don't I don't know. I don't know the whole thing of it. And I know he served a couple years already. Right. They're saying he might have to do like a couple months or some shit like that, right? Right. After time served, and he's not in the feds, so he don't got to do like 90% right, of right. his time. Um, and he took a plea deal without cooperating and putting anybody else. He, he chose not Can to. Can you touch um, on that a little bit, though? And I, and I know it's, it's no one's responsibility to really like, you know, clear up some of that. But I, the, I feel like there's a narrative in the streets, on the internet, in different places that a plea deal means you told. It doesn't, though. 
Not always. It can, no. Mm. A plea deal can mean you told. A plea deal can mean I'm just, I don't want to take this shit to trial. It mm. doesn't mean I'm cooperating and I'm going to testify against this nigga and this might put him away. Right. You know what I mean? Like, bro, you can go, you can go to, bro, you can go to court for a speeding ticket. And say no low contender, like or whatever. Like you, you can. That's that's your your, you, your plea deal is like. Oh, I'm gonna leave here today, and I'm gonna pay this. I don't want to fight this ticket. Right. That don't mean you a rat because you cooperated. Nah, facts, nigga. So it's like he already and his lawyer publicly said, I'm not cooperating anything on that YSL case. And and the thing I hate is like everybody was choosing side. You see this thing now where they're like nobody was saying free Lucci. Right. Because everybody was choosing thug side. Right. And now that we see him getting out, everybody's saying free Lucci. I mean, not that I feel like we need to monitor when we say free him and free this. It's like, it's never like that. It's like it's it's weird. It's like y'all don't even know the facts of things. Right. You know what I mean? And I get it. A lot of people on Thug Case were coming out and and it looked like, I mean, who's to say if that was snitching or not? I don't know right, right. Gunner's situation or the other people on the situation. But it, it, it looks like it because he's saying, well, hey, is this a gang? And he goes, yes, ma'am. Right. And he go, were you here when this person, were there guns in this house when you were at the house with this person? Right. And he goes, yes, ma'am. It's part of my plea deal. So it looks like you're cooperating. But if that information doesn't lock Thug up, is that snitching? If, if, if Thug, now, if Thug ends up, that ends up going against Thug and he gets more time, to me, that would be right, right. that would be a rat. Right. But if them all taking plea deals and leads up to Thug at the end, if he fucking around and get what Lucci getting, where he only end up doing three to six months and he take his last plea deal, I don't see where anybody rat it. Who knows if everybody not just taking a plea? I mean, have we seen anybody just come out and just all out tell? No, nah, and I think I, I think that's a tough part as a fan too, though. Is it's like you don't know. You know the rules in the sense that the vague term snitching, this is a bad thing. These niggas don't, bro, this shit is corny out right, here, but, bro. But, but I'm saying it's, it's like, corny. I feel like there's pressure on the fans to feel like, oh, we can't even be happy a motherfucker coming home because we haven't, the, the masses or the media or society tell us which side of this that we should even have a stance on. Like a motherfucker can't even just be a YFN Lucci fan no more. If they feel like you got true size now, like, exactly. like 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 how they did with Dolph and how they did with um uh Gotti, yeah, facts. with Dolph and Gotti. But you not know you know how disgusting this shit is. It's horrible. When Dolph when Dolph died, all I seen in the comments was, oh they oh they gonna get they gonna get Gotti. Mm -hmm. Then Gotti then Gotti big bro died. Facts. And and, and before I seen any love or prayers pass to this man, all I all I saw was Dolph emojis, or like oh Dolph went and, oh they sliding for Dolph. Yeah. Got to you next. It's like, that's all I see, man. This shit is ugly out. But it's like so many people take part in it. And it's like a lot of the internet motherfuckers, they don't even matter. But it, it, it all takes part. It, it, it's even as big as like a, when a beef is real, I, I, think in, I think this need to stop too. When a beef is real, DJs need to not play them disc records. Mm. That shit need to stop, bro. Like Dolph diss was so disrespectful. Like when he was like, you know what I mean? Like. His this was like nigga, he was saying some wild shit. Talking about his family, brother, his head size, his baby mom's calling his child mama B. I bro, and then we get yeah. to play that in the club and niggas is singing it. It's like that, it's like it's hard to let that type of shit go. Now I gotta do something. Facts. And it's like, but, but then it's like when a nigga pass away, I see them same niggas in the club that was singing and chanting it. Y'all would sing that record and sing Young Dolph. I mean, and sing Gotti record back to back if it was played. Right. And the DJ get to playing it just for a reaction. Because nobody has no code or moral behind nothing, bro. When right. these niggas get to dying and niggas' moms' cribs get to shot up, this shit is nasty work. Right. You know what I mean? All, all the shit I hear about with, with Lucci and them, these niggas got families, man. And I don't know the ins and outs. I don't know who did what. And it's not my business. When I go and I say salute, because I know Lucci. You know what I mean? Like Not like I grew up with him, but I done did business with Lucci. You know what I'm saying? I done got... Lucci booked on the North. He done came to Franklin Road and did a show out there, and I connected the dot. He done did a joint for my nigga Pac, wife and K, his big brother. That's my man's. You know what I'm saying? Thanks. Shout out to Trey Pound. That's his other brother. I fuck with them niggas. So if 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 I say that, it's not because I'm not choosing the side. I don't know Thug, so I don't speak on the situation. I am paying attention to the situation. Right. I am seeing a Rico case and seeing how it was going on, but I'm not. I pray for him, but I don't really have an opinion. Right. I'm not choosing the side. I just know I met Lucci. I that homie. We got a record together. He did a record with my man, so that's what I speak on. A lot of these niggas don't even know these niggas, man. Do you think with the current climate in Atlanta, 
mm-hmm. right now from a mainstream artist perspective. Do you think that it's important that Lucci gets the proper welcome home, or do you think he will now? You think so? Yeah, because look, 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 look now. Look at the story. Now everybody's sucking dick, so it's gonna be a lot of real love and a lot of fake love. Mm. Cause now he the nigga that didn't say nothing. He coming home. You know, a lot of niggas weren't saying much. It was a lot of free slat and all that. I seen a lot of that, especially on the big, large platforms. Everybody was mentioning Thug Case. Nobody said nothing about Lucci. I'm not talking about the fans. I'm not right, talking right, about right. his friends. I'm talking about all of the big platforms, all of the big shows and everything. All I saw was shit about Thug Case. No one ever said nothing about Lucci. So now that he coming home and you seen that he done stood up and his lawyer went up and said that gangsta ass shit at the news and was like, whoever said that's a fucking liar. Right, right, right. He, he's not cooperating with anybody. We've already made that clear. I don't want to hear it again. That right. was like, oh, man, <laughs> right. like, I want this nigga lawyer. Yeah, this yeah, nigga's facts. fire. Like, yeah, facts. watch when Lucci come home, bro. It's going to be like when Rallo came home, this nigga came home, made a movie. Like, it's going to be a lot of that when niggas come home and- I don't know. I think I think it's important to just focus on the love, man. I, I'm yeah. not here to dissect the fake love from the real. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm happy he coming home. I know that nigga got a big family. Do, do you think? I mean, I think I've noticed the difference in the energy of Atlanta these past couple of years. It's been different with people being locked up and people being and just gone away. and yeah, dead. Tr- tr- school trouble. Rest in peace, trouble. Yeah, that shit hit the city hard. Nah, for sure. Hard. Not for sure. And I, I feel like when, uh, even when Takeoff, you know, like. Takeoff, it, yeah. It, 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 that mm. that one felt like it was kicking us while we was down. Like, Takeoff yeah. felt like this, yeah. like, y'all doing this shit too. It was, it was a spree of things. Yeah. You got you got one of the biggest artists ca- caught his Rico charge. Lucci and Thug joint, that beef. Mm-hmm. Trouble pass. Takeoff pass. The Migos broke up. So it was looking, and, uh, 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 and somebody else died. Who was it that died? Lokeem died, right? Key or whatever. Key, Lil yeah, Key died. I think so. He passed away. Yeah, yeah. So it was looking like, damn. Yeah, facts. You know what I mean? It was you, it was looking real crazy. Do you think from uh Bankroll Fresh too? He died a little early. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a lot of niggas. Bankroll Fresh. Do you think though that like do you think Atlanta needs that to fully function as Atlanta? What? They they need that like that fixture in in the hip hop space, in the rap space to be proud of, to make people want to go out and touch the city. Like, do you think Atlanta needs that to be that special, magical yeah. Atlanta? Yeah, because a lot of niggas don't really know, and we'll get into this in another episode about Atlanta, but it's like Atlanta took over and was lapping everybody because of the way the network was and how mm-hmm. no one's a celebrity. Everyone's like, every like my nigga, if T.I. is the king of the South, bro, if you was on Peter Street when 255 was open before that shit got burnt down or however it got burnt down, or, bro, T.I. was on Peter Street all the time. <laughs> Word. Like, I'm talking about Dolo, too. When is this? Now till forever. <laughs> like, tip me outside, my nigga, like a regular nigga. Like, if th- if that's our, you know what I mean, Hove or what, like, when you going to see Hove? When, when am I going to go to the Bronx on 158 at the corner store deli and see see fucking the, the top nigga from the Bronx or whoever's the main person from, the, from New York just outside? Right. Like, what's the odds of me bumping into 50 or Jay-Z or anybody from New York? Like, I will bump into 2 Chains, Future, yeah, yeah, yeah. At, at a strip club, Jeezy at Magic City. Yeah, or New York superstars didn't have that, like, approachable approachable identity the way Atlanta's do superstars New York have. caused it to be like that. So I think when Atlanta, the, the way the network is, it's just so much love and everybody really tapped in with, e- with each other. Mm-hmm. And, it, and a lot of it happened from the way the clubs was run. The open mics was better. We had more here. I think the the the, the fucking um like uh 107 not prime prime example, hot 97 up north, they didn't have no freestyle Fridays like that. Mm. You couldn't just go upstairs from talking rapping to the intern and go upstairs. Coco brother had niggas going upstairs. You could be then the dirty boys, nigga. You <laughs> fuck around and get your song played <laughs> right. on the main station. Yeah. So right. you do that shit long enough. Now all of a sudden, New York is like, how are these niggas passing this? Cause y'all don't give no opportunity. Facts. When, when when I don't see none of the main niggas on radio letting these hungry niggas upstairs, even if you got to deal with the riffraff. Right. And y'all wonder why y'all niggas got lapped and y'all started sounding like us mm. in Atlanta. And so I think, like, that really hurt the city when you start seeing a lot of the niggas. Because you got to think, these ain't just regular niggas. Like, in Trouble? Trouble, I'm talking about, he's one of them niggas you call a made nigga. Like, Trouble was good outside everywhere. Facts. Like, that nigga, we done hung with Trouble in the bluff. When they shooting dice with 12 Dracos around, everybody got a yeah. pistol with their pants sagging. Yeah. Before we head to the club and hop in the Sprinter, this nigga outside in the trap. Then he might hop in this Corvette, go to a nice club of Cheetah. Yeah. He might fuck around and get the grilled chicken with the mash with the joint. <laughs> like, 
He might fucking around, go to Edgewood, kick it. Like, Facts. niggas is chilling, regular. And, and this is, and if you know Trouble, Trouble, to me, probably him and Slim Duncan, it don't get no bigger than, I'm talking about niggas that really get bitches. Yeah. Like, them probably the top two to me in my generation. My school was different. Yeah, and, and both of these niggas are gone. So that fucks up the city. Yeah, fast. It's a lot of niggas that was tapped in with each other that really had a high level of like, remember that meme that was going around? It was like, I thought she was the one till I saw on the Instagram story in Trouble Sprinter or in Lucci Sprinter. Right, right, right. That's for a reason. Yeah. It, it, that's for, because he's going out a lot. And, and <laughs> one of them nights, one of them 12 girls might be your shorty. Yeah, facts. And, and now that's gone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we need we need this shit to come. It's a lot of good things starting to happen. Like Rallo coming out, the case is starting to end. You know what I mean? Like some of the beefs ending maybe, I don't know, maybe this shit will get back to, to what it was. Because I ain't seen a hot nigga out of Atlanta, a new nigga out. In the, it used to be a new nigga every month. Right. <laughs> a new record every month. Now it was like Chicago taking over in Detroit. You know what I mean? Now I'm, Detroit niggas is killing right now. Like Facts. even the girls, like Atlanta Facts. didn't let them in from due to beef and death. Well, one thing I think that's a little controversial though on this topic though, do you think... I feel like within the lore of like hip hop, mm -hmm. like you never like it's always free everybody. Yeah, yeah. And and do you and obviously you'll hear the expression of like nah, I don't wish jail on no one or I don't wish, yeah. like do you do you think it should be my that niggas that know the code by the way right but but I'm saying do you think in the sense of like it, what if a motherfucker really out here often motherfuckers that's a good question. and that's doing some shit. Is there ever a time where mm. the culture needs to take a step back <laughs> if if the facts are presented to them and be like, nah, it ain't free, so and so. He was actually murdering this mother. He was yeah, actually yeah, yeah. like so 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 you asking me if it's a situation where one of these people on it, one of these cases, actually did the murders. Right. Or 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 <laughs> Millie did it, did it. <laughs> but like, or, or are those things Is that a fact? Oh, okay, okay. Are those things separate? Is it like you know what I'm saying? Is is it? It's just the goal to just. It's always free, but like, let's keep it a buck. We, we some bullshit. Yeah, we some bullshit. We 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 don't really dig into that. We don't, bro. The society is, bro. We're dumb, bro. This whole shit about the streets and telling and, you know, giving and, and, you know doing it for the hood and my nigga, I seen some shit the other day pissing me the fuck off. How much time did BG do? Over a decade. A lot. It felt like a lot. Bro, they had some shit on there talking about did he snitch or not? And then he went, he went on on the gram defending himself. Bro, you telling me, hold on, bro. You motherfucking niggas telling me I could do over a decade in jail and I still gotta come out here and show y'all my paperwork and snitch prove allegations it, and shit. And prove to you that I didn't snitch. I just served 10 plus years. Bro, this society, my nigga, this shit fucked up, bro. Like this, this shit that you gotta allegedly prove you really don't, cause these yeah, a lot of a lot of the motherfuckers saying something they not gonna do nothing anyway. Them days is over. They not even gonna do nothing anyway. So it's like, I don't know, bro. I, I yeah. Mm. Mm. Get them the fuck out of there, though. Mm. Mm. Right. Mm. Let me ask you a question. What makes what's the criteria for literally being a serial killer? How many people you gotta kill? What? Two people? Right. And 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 and, and rest in peace, King Vaughn, because I don't know, but they, they had this they had that thing going on about Saying that he was, you know, he said he murdered, you know, I don't know how many, and it's not, it's not even funny, but it's like, it's, you know what I mean? It's a lot. It's like, and, and I'm not saying he did it, he didn't. He's not here to, to to tell his story. I don't know if he was just rapping and just saying it, but it's like, did you consider that, you know, if, if a yeah, so technically it says it says three, but no, he Picasso's right on par though. So a serial killer is typically a person who murders three or more persons. With the murders taking place over more than a month and including a significant period of time between them. And I grew up on these niggas rapping. And I don't know if these niggas really did it or not, but I grew up on that, DMX, Biggie, The Locks. Right, and that's a part of it too. It's like your favorite rapper and killed 30 people. but then More someone, than that. Right, but, th <laughs> but then I'm saying, but then someone's cousin gets shot and now it's like we all got to feel the... 
We the, twist it as a community, bro. Yeah, it's tough. It, but but it's tough in real time sometimes where you like, I think the answer's got to be if it's wrong, it's wrong. But I don't think it's ever yeah. going to get to that place. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's a thin line. Because with rap, that we, we can't lie. Like that side of it also plays a huge factor with entertainment. Mm. You know, and, and that's separate or seen as if, if we go to the movie theater and we watch Keanu Reeves. John Wick? Yeah. Kill 145 people in a movie. It, it, it don't feel like we easily separate that as not authentic. Right. But there's something about how that entertainment factor plays a role in hip hop that I feel right. like it has a way more severe cause. And, and how they use how they use lyrics now, because I don't think they would if Quentin Tarantino murdered somebody, right. murdered three people. I don't think at in the court they're gonna take his screenplay exactly. and go, "Oh, you did you wrote this in a film and play it to real life." And that's another thing. There's that pressure on the artist too of like Denzel can play Frank Lucas and no one's like, "Man, Denzel ain't no fucking gangster." Right. But it's like it. But but. Let Drake say a bar that's semi aggressive, and they're like, he he, he, can't he ain't be, like that. He ain't like that. He can't do so that. <laughs> it, it is it is crazy that that relationship that hip hop is a special and, thing, man. and the culture yeah. has with with like the consumer and the and, and the perception of it on this side of wanting it to be so authentic and so real. It's a lot of thin lines in it be, because Meek had to respond to something that what's the homie that with the dreads that look like J Cole a little bit that keep on calling out. Oh, uh, he from here, ain't he? Nah, he's from, he from Louisiana, something like that. D one, yeah, yeah. I think I think D one has a lot of good points, but I think it's coming across wrong. And, and some of the stuff I understand, like Meek was saying, was I'm not necessarily glorifying that, but I'm telling stories. So if I go if I go and tell a story about I'm because I'm I've seen a lot of wild shit in the hood. I've seen a lot of wild shit. I've seen a nigga get shot. I've seen niggas have to go to the hospital with a bullet wound and da da da. Right. Can I rap that story? Is that me glorifying it, or mm. or or am I saying this this what could happen if you stay here? Right. If, if I've said a lot, oh, this nigga went to the feds, my nigga head got locked up, my nigga doing ten. I'm not glorifying him in jail. I'm saying my nigga. This is my life. Yeah, my nigga got into it and he shot a nigga. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my nigga, my nigga Bazel did you know a decade whatever because he hit a nigga in the head with a bat when he was a young nigga in school and then he had got locked up and got out when he was an adult. Right. That's not if I rap that story, that's not me glorifying violence. Right. Some niggas, let's keep it a buck, are glorifying violence. Yeah, facts. So what I do like is that it's talked about. I'm not saying that D is always right in it because it's kinda hard when it's a nigga that you don't look at like that to give that message. Mm -hmm. It'd be different if it was a nigga like if like if it was a nigga like DMX or a nigga that we know, like if 50 went out. And he did it. When 50 go and put a lot of street niggas in the in the headlock and talk to him or like Wallow. Right. Why even when I seen episodes when Wallow was chopping it up with some of these young niggas, and I seen some of the niggas in the back kind of looking with their head down, looking bored, like, like, I don't right. wanna hear this old, I don't wanna hear this shit, OG. If Wallow can't talk to you, what make you think, homie with the dress that went <laughs> to college? And it's hella nice right. and passive aggressive. And you can't, under 20 you can't years. talk to these street niggas, right? Because they, they they don't know. Have you won a fight? Do you, you know what I'm saying? Have you had to keep a pistol on you to keep your family safe? Right. Have you ever been on the corner and sold anything from a rock or heroin or a three five or marijuana or anything? Do you know how to weigh? Do you know how to eyeball a three five or a seven with your eye because your scale broke and the battery don't work no more? Right. Can they be able to relate to that to be able to go? You know, I'm gonna have this conversation with you. Or, or you just this like you know you just Christian and you just talking all the overly godly stuff because right, we don't right. know a lot of Christians could be hypocrites. We don't right. know you could be like the pastor that's over here getting the money from niggas and just spending it on the side. Pastor got a pilot. Facts. Pastor got a whip. Pastor yeah. got a Bentley. Pastor got a plane. We don't really know. It's, just, it's a lot of talk. Right. Not saying he ain't put the work in because he said he put a lot of work in outside, gave back yeah, to yeah. the youth. But it's like if you're not really that nigga that they could look at, because. If he's if he preach it and Wallow preach it, I might want to listen to Wallow first, right? Because I feel like not saying, oh, you got to go to jail to be able to talk nah, to but me. But it's got more of an understandable it's just application. Something about when yeah. Wallow talk it, when Fifty and them talk about that shit, it's like something about it just come across different than when D say it. So maybe he yeah. might need to get around a certified street nigga from Louisiana to just maybe say Amen in the back or something, or just ad lib with him. <laughs> like it's something about right. when Nipsey talked about doing better in the marathon. Yeah, for sure. That look in his eye through the video, it's something about Nip, bro, that just reminded me of authenticity from the streets. You know what I mean? So 
we could jump on that shit another day, man. Just nah, for sure. Salute to all them brothers, man. Praying for their families. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I feel like I don't see a lot of that at all. I, I don't. I see everybody saying free this, free that, but let's pray for these people without just putting the prayer hand emojis out. Let's actually. I've actually bowed my head and said a prayer for some of these people, the ones that I don't know, the ones that I do know. Right. I think we need to start doing that more, man. Send praise out to these people. Mind your business. We don't know the ins and outs of these cases. Just pray for them. Wish them well. And before we get to saying free this side and free this side and whatever, you know what I mean? Facts. Amen. Switching gears here a little bit. Um, praise God. NFL playoffs have been going on. Ooh. Have you been watching? I is, have. Is, there, is there a team you kind of got your... Your eyes on that that you kind of like you think they can make a run. Um, obviously, you know this this past weekend. I'm going Ravens. Oh, you going straight? I'm rooting for the Ravens. Falcons ain't make it. The Jets ain't make it. I'm rooting for the Ravens. I want a black quarterback to win. Don't don't don't. Patrick Mahomes don't count. He's half. He's half white. Well, counted with Obama, huh? Well, sir. I felt like Obama seems a little more brotherly brotherly than Pat. Cause you know, cause his shorty ain't black. Yeah. No offense. Well, shorty ain't black. She's not. So even though Barack light skin, you got Michelle. It don't get, it don't get more good sister than that. I want Lamar to win it. I, I need somebody that look rough and rugged to take it home. And, 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 and I rough just, and rugged, Lamar. I'm just saying. I, I need my bet is Lamar. I feel like Lamar was my pick throughout the season. I had I had Lamar and them winning, and I been I rooted for him before when he was supposed to win, and he lost. He was losing them playoff games. Fuck that. What? I I don't want them to win, bro. Why? So it's not I, I fuck with Lamar for real, but it's more so the reaction to Lamar. Who's your team? So I'm a Bengals fan. And, okay, so and, your team's out of it in the NFL. Yeah, don't okay. say that again. No, that's alright. But um, he was injured, right? Yeah, Joe Burrow didn't really so play the whole year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Right. But um. But you know what's crazy? I mean, I'm pulling for the Chiefs or the Lions. I, I want the Super Bowl. I, to, mad at the Lions. I want the Super Bowl to be Chiefs Lions. The Lions ain't been in shit since. Nah, it's a great story. Since Ben the Lions, Pimpin, is, since. the Lions is the. I feel like the two best stories when the playoffs started was the Lions and the Bucks. Facts. Cause, cause, that was a great game. Cause by no, the way. Yeah, because nobody was giving my man um, Baker. Baker Mayfield, no props. Great I, year. I, I didn't know that they damn they had the same team from when Tom Brady was playing. Yeah, yeah. great fucking year. Um, but no, the yeah, Lions yeah, ain't had shit in so long. It's I want, great story. I want them to fucking smash they San Francisco. The, okay. Mm, okay. They play San Francisco in San Francisco. Yep. Yeah, I want them to smash. Tough game. We'll see though. But you know what it is, yo. I, I, I and I had this shit with like with Kendrick too in music. Like where I, I be hard on Kendrick a lot. You know what I'm saying? Whoa! <laughs> oh! It's a pause. <laughs> hey yo. I go. I'll be hard on Kendrick. Like, it's like crazy. I'm a big critic of his. Got you. Okay, son of a bitch. But listen, that was been <laughs> but not because of Kendrick, because of the reaction to Kendrick. And I feel like there was a series event of events. Like it was the combination of the control verse and to pimp a butterfly, where that generation of fans instantly were like, "This is the status quo for what." lyricism is in, in today's culture and society okay. and this is it and this is what it looks like. Okay. And and I and I, I and, and it was like from that point he couldn't do no fucking wrong. Mm. And to where now like Vibe and Double XL puts out these lists and mm. Kendrick is number two behind Hove for mm. greatest of all time and shit like that. And that's in comparison to what? That pisses me off. And and it's not Kendrick's fault, it's the reaction to him. Mm. Now I'm gonna translate that to the NFL where I fuck with Lamar but the Lamar fans, it's like, don't do it. I get it. Don't do it. I used to be black. I was happy when we hit. No, I'm just playing. But no, <laughs> I'm saying like pe people get, they're so excited to. Ha but it's like I see for what it is. He not really like that. He is though. He's not though. He, I'm, I'm about to break it down to you. All right, go ahead. I, I, in my opinion, he already won MVP. He has. He's he, about to win another. He one. won MVP off. His, he about to win another one. Yeah. His critique was he got two critiques. Let's keep it a buck. Hold on. Keep in mind the Ravens really never had really good wide receivers. This the first facts. This the first year where they had where they got great. They still people. don't. But 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 better though, Philip. Right. Yeah. Two, two, his two critiques was he runs too much. He hasn't won in the, he hasn't won in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And he had and, and his passing needs to improve. Right. He did that. So listen. So now let's see if he wins in the playoffs. His passing looks like it's improved because mm -hmm. of the number one rushing team in the NFL. So when you hand they are. So when you hand the mm -hmm. ball off, 
you know, they, they, they run an RPO offense, mm. which stands for mm. run pass option. Okay. Which basically means on a play by play basis, and within any given play, one play, like it can look like a run, he could keep it, and then he'll be rolling yeah. out looking like he's running, yeah. and then he could pass it. Mm. And they run the ball so damn well yeah, that after, and it's not Lamar's fault. It's a system offense, it works. They run the ball so fucking well mm-hmm. that after a while, that defense has to creep up. That's any good passing team, though. No, I feel you, though. But hear me out. Once they start creeping up, now Lamar starts going over the top with it. And, and so at the end of the games or during the games, them passing yards and them passing stats start going up. Sounds like good but football to me. It's good football, but it's not the same as a Mahomes or a Goff or a Josh Allen or a someone in, who a, got a, who got a, real in a prototypical offense taking the three-step drop. Like, like one thing about Lamar, as a, exceptional as he is of an athlete, mm. I, I haven't seen Lamar yet in a playoff situation have that Mahomes or that Brady moment where he's down seven, ten points. With, with a game-winning drive. Two and a half minutes the on playoffs. the clock. And he can't do some fake-ass play-action bootleg, I'll give you that. run around this way. He got to earn it He got to earn it right now. I've, I've never seen him put together a drive where he just, one, two, three, boom, pass. And, we, and we've seen Pat do it Mar- so many times. We, we, we've seen we've Homer seen, from the Bengals yeah, do it. That's my only beef. I think he's an exceptional. I like Lamar. I that. think he's an exceptional athlete. But I think, we, you know how me and you talk about this all the time with basketball, even with people like Fargo and shit. We, we, we live in a stats era where, like, people just see the stat at the end of the game and they're like, oh, so, like, me and you have talked about LeBron in the past where I'm like, bro, LeBron's shooting 48% from three. Right. And you're like, who's stepping out on him? Right. On the wing that's, like, trying to smother him. That's pause debatable, yeah. From three, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's similar in offense sometimes where, or in, in the NFL sometimes where right. it's like, Shit may seem a certain way, but when you start looking at the offense or looking at how it really functions, you know. Right. But shout out to Lamar. I get if he if he wins a ring this year, I will shut the fuck up and I I quit hating because I do be All hating. Right, I do be hating. I'm just a critic. All right, so, so let's do this. I'm hard on Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's make a bet. You got him going all the way. Yeah, you pick who you got, and the the loser has to get the other person lunch. How about at the this? Office. How about you just say what you want to say, which is you Lamar. bet. The Ravens win a Super Bowl, and I bet they don't. Nah, you just pick a team. Oh, no, you know what? We can do that. All right, bet. All right, loser buys lunch. Deal? Squeeze it. All right, cool. Got it. All right, bet. Um, I'm cool with that. All right, bet. (sighs) One thing that needs fixing in football, the Pro Bowl's trash. (laughs) Like, (laughs) I don't know about y'all, but, like, I remember, like. watch it. Y'all watch the Pro Bowl? Not nineties. Watching that bullshit. <laughs> not, I, thank you. I was mm. about to say nineties, early two thousands. Mm. It was lit. You had these skills challenges, mm. bro. You'd have like Brett Favre, Peyton Manning, all these guys seeing mm. who threw the farthest, who ran the fastest, mm. and, and and who had the best hands. Mm. All of the skills challenges, right? So the 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 thing being talked about right now mm. is that the Pro Bowl should be divided into like black versus white. <laughs> and who would win? Yeah, and who would win? The blacks. No. Cornerback's gonna be tough. Quarter? Corner. Let's start a quarterback. Let's, let's start. You got Lamar. I mean, we, we, or we Pat. We, do we get to claim Pat? That's that. That's what the argument Does is. Does he play for we each team? Corn, like two we quarters. Flip a coin for, but we're taking Pat for sure. He's black. That's fucked up. He's black. He's, no, no, no. So, so I'm starting Lamar, and I got my backup. As Hold Pat. on one second. Who's your quarterback? Before you piss me off. You, you just killed him for having a white wife. I didn't kill him. I you just did. said he had one. Yeah, you were tough on him. him. You were hard on him. I didn't kill him. <laughs> so he's mixed, and he's, the white wife brings Pat. him on our team. You got to have a 100% white player. Play how his voice sounds right now. Oh, no, he's white. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Yo. But now, That's right. the voice off for but, sure. Okay, you know what? Even if you fucking have him, bro, we got Burrow. We got Josh. So you're oh, so starting so start Burrow. I'm just saying, regardless, quarterback's competitive. I'm it, going Lamar. But I'm saying it's not like it's drastically one way or the other. Nah, like, I'm oh going my Lamar. God. Are you going Lamar? Yeah. Quarterback for the white coalition? Chase, who we got? You said corner or quarter? Quarter. Chase, who would you take for white quarterback right now? Hel- like if health Burrow. wasn't a thing? You like Burrow, Josh Allen? Who you like? All right, so we got Josh Allen at quarterback. I'm not mad at I'm that. I'm taking Lamar, bro. Running back, we got Christian fucking McCaffrey. Watch your mouth. I got Derrick Henry. We're not pressed. He has not Yeah, well, Chase killed him. Prime? What, I mean, is he hurt? He, he was he, he was a little banged up this year. But either I'm way, I mean, D, I'm taking D Henry, you got bro. options, though. Who, who killed it this year, Chase? Uh, Montgomery was, was balling in Detroit this year. 
Um, who else? You taking you taking I'm him? Cat, you, taking, uh, you taking him over Saquon Barkley? Healthy? <sighs> Saquon's been beat up though. Pause. So what I'm saying? Cornerback, y'all don't have. Stop it. Well, we'll we'll get there. You don't, don't want to get there. Don't with yeah, the white guys. Don't piss me off. Why aren't there white corners? Because can we? You want to talk about this? You want to talk about genetics? Lateral quickness. Yeah, that fast fucking twitch fiber. So son. cornerback is is predominantly based off of speed. I mean, think about it this. Why can't there be white corners? I don't know about what you, you to me it's the toughest position to play in football. Mm. Number one. Bro, imagine covering the fastest players in the league mm -hmm. and half the time you're running backwards doing it. Mm. So it can't be white. <laughs> <laughs> but for but for real though, the last <laughs> legit one we had was Jason Seahorn. Who's nice? Like 20 years ago. He was mm. a savage mm. for the Giants. Was an all pro, was a pro bowler. Mm. And he was just like a freak athlete. By the way, yeah. Back like four or five years ago, uh, Troy Apke got drafted from Penn State. That's his name. <laughs> Excuse me. Troy Apke got drafted mm. from Penn State as a safety, mm. and he ran. It's actually there's a funny video on the internet at the combine where he runs like a four three forty, mm. and Dion's there watching him run For and like real? and like gives him a hug and is like, "Hey, you could run." White, white boy was like that. Like congratulates him, mm. but cover skills and whatnot, he wasn't too elite. Right, so black, so black out the corner. But real quick, though, Christian McCaffrey, though. So I feel like we take a running back, though, this year. I'll give you that. Receiver. Blacks. Stop it. Yeah, y'all got Tyreek Hill, Justin Jefferson. Let's not even do this. Jamar Chase. We're not upset about it, though. We've got Cooper Cup. I like Cooper. How was his year today, this year? He, had, he, had, he was hurt half the season. I like Cooper, though. Cooper He's Cup's nice. like a top He's three, a top five receiver in the league. Blacks got the receiver. Cooper yeah. Cup. We got Adam Thielen. Is Puka Nakua white, Chase? <laughs> Doesn't sound white. Who could the coolest? But he's Fire he's man. white passing when you mm. look at him. Safeties black. Tight end white. I go white. Damn. Travis Kelsey. Yeah. Mark and Kittle. Andrews. Kittle. Kittle. Yeah. Damn. Black people don't have tight ends these days. Damn. Defensive end whites. I'm going. Hmm. We got Aiden Hutchinson, Nick Bosa, T.J. Mm. Fucking Watt. Mm. I was carrying them out. Savage, though. Facts. And we got Max Crosby, Chase. What position Wagner play? Middle linebacker. Hall of Famer. Mm. Not going to eat your lunch for that. Linebacker's black, for sure. Yeah, Roquan Smith. What Patrick about defensive Queen. tackle? It gets it gets tough in the trenches. I don't know. I'll give it to y'all, though. Aaron Donald and, you know and, I'm and Chris Jones. I feel like I feel like on, a, on that proper argument, the blacks are, are probably two up above than the whites. For sure, bro. All right. Fuck you. So it's going to be a fun, competitive game. <laughs> and most importantly, we're going to donate to charity at the end of it. <laughs> That's a fact. That's um, a fact. So, yeah, I'm not mad about that. <laughs> um, basketball's been off the chain lately. Joel Kinda. Embiid dropped 70 points last night. <sighs> Is anybody going to beat Kobe's 81? Yeah, it'll happen. You know what pissed me off, though? I know, no, I know but it's not televised. Not no? Mm. I think it'll happen. I think it'll... But 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 you know what's sad about this? That's facts. You know what's sad about the seventy? No one gives a fuck. No, bro. I don't know a motherfucker that went. Like I know niggas that went in YouTube Kobe's highlights to see yeah. it and be like, I need to see how this shit look. Well, that's the tough part with basketball. The more points that get scored, it's like you get desensitized to it. Nah, it 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 can't be nothing under that eighty one. Like fact, and it was losing. It won no blowout. Yeah. They was down. Why were y'all losing to that Raptors team? It don't matter, though. It, this, that performance, I felt like a nigga going to have to, bro, a nigga's going to have to. And I saw them scoring performances. Like, even when Devin Booker had 70, did you ever go watch that 70? No, you don't give maybe, a fuck. Maybe once, but. You don't but give yeah, a shit. But that's, that's my thing. But speak to that, though. Why, why do you think, do you think it's just because it's not it's not whoever scored the most, like, ever in whole, history? If you're not first or last, bro. Because we know about Wilts. But it's not on video, so we already so the the high right now is Kobe's. That the high is really Kobe's eighty one. Will's not on video for his on it. No, that hundred ain't on video. It's just, it's just him holding up a fucking picture with the one hundred one. Damn. Salute the, the Will. Fuck was they filming salute, back salute then? Salute the big. You know what I mean? Big swinging Wilt, man. How we got all that footage of concentration camps and shit? There's no and footage of his one hundred one game. Wilt Chamberlain. But there's footage of Kobe's eighty one. A nigga gonna have to drop eighty two. Seven foot black man. If a nigga drop eighty two though, niggas gonna watch that game. Okay, if someone do it, who do you think it would be? Steph. Come on, bro. Steph. What's Steph's career high? 60? If that? Nah, it's like it's 65. Luca? Ooh, and don't hate. 
I don't know if I can let we, him, we, we could put together the white and black roster in basketball, too. I feel like Kevin Durant could do it, but I don't know why he doesn't. Can I be real with you? I feel like Kevin Durant and Dame could do it. The old Clay could have did it. Can I be real with you? Are we witnessing this season? Not everybody's Braun, bro. And I, what I mean by that is. You mean it's longevity? All right. What, what's going on here? You mean as far as longevity? It's 2005 crack dealer <laughs> hat right here. Dad, when you say not LeBron, what you mean like longevity? I'm saying like, I feel like no one as a whole, like, motherfuckers ain't checking for KD this year. Not he is. Nah. If, if this feel like the first year, maybe in his career, where I feel like, no. bro, I ain't even heard no one say his name. I have. No. They, they had him. They talked about him the other day, to asking like, can he be? KD has said some shit about he. Why can't he be considered as one of the goats? And then they talked about it. Well, he's not. I think when the playoffs come, because you know their team was injured a lot though. I think Bradley Bill back, and I think they they do a good run in the playoffs. Who's your pick for this year? For what? Basketball for like to go, go to the finals. Yeah, yeah, nigga. Who's your pick to go to the finals? I, 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 let's say go I to the finals. Let's let's. I, I'll give you East and West. And don't hit me with the Knicks shit. No, no, no. I think the Knicks have a chance to go to the Eastern Conference. I didn't ask fun. you that. Well, I'm saying. Don't try to put the Knicks in this, man. Hey, listen. Finals, who's it going to be? East, West. Boston from the East. That's my pick. Clippers from the West. Damn, you got my picks. Jinx. What are you at? You want to be like me so bad, bro. No. my my my. I'm rooting for the Bucks. I will not be surprised if Denver goes back, though. I don't think they're going to make it. I'm rooting for the Bucks. Dame's my guy. I'm rooting. I think the Bucks and the Celtics are going to be the best series. Do you think there's a little bit of hate on Jokic for being white? Maybe. Nah. Um, hear me out because last year he nah. very well could have won a like a, a third MVP in a row or whatever. And I remember like Demarcus Cousins and people like that were doing interviews and were like, "We can't give that to him because then are we saying he's Shaq or we're saying he's whatever?" Mm. But by the end of his career, are we not saying that? No, he don't play both sides of the court. That that's the problem. That's the, only, that, that's the only reason why Jokic ain't taking it away because his offense is, can I be elite, honest with you? is elite above everybody. Can I, can I tell you where you're wrong there, though? You know, no, I'm wrong. You know what's a defen- defensive stat? What? Rebounding. Oh, not a great rebounder. Still not a great defender. I mean, like Steph. Steph and Yoke got that shit going on where they're not elite defenders. Right, so then shut the fuck but up. Because you'll give it to Steph all day. Well, Steph led the league in steals before. His MVP year. What, with 2.7 go a game or something? No matter. He did what AR did. It's cool. We got the same picks. I'm going to go Celtics and Clippers, but I'm rooting for the Bucks versus Clippers. You're rooting for the Bucks? Yeah. Because Dame? Okay. I want, I, I, want, it. I, want, I want Dame. I, I, think, I think it's time for Dame to get one. Cancun? Yeah. Cabo. Hey, Yahtzee. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, side question, though. Top three. What's the, what's, the, what's the top three black names you think you've heard? And don't feel racial about this. In my life? Yeah, top three like if black I close names. My are, eyes, like, pit- like, like, shut your mouth. If you saw a black dude and I said Owen, and he was from the hood, you know what I mean? He he was he was from the bluff in Atlanta. He was from Bankhead, Georgia. And you saw him walking the street. I said, "Oh, guess his name real quick." Jamal. <laughs> <laughs> I can see him off the rip. smiling at me. Off the rip. Hey man, can I borrow two dollars? No, leave me alone. Jamal. Yeah. Second name. Runner up. Darius. <laughs> Yo, Darius is like Jamal and Darius. Third runner up. Jamal and Dumb, Dumb, Dumb. Yeah. Those are good names, though. Yeah. These are staples in the Sta- community. Basic joints, but. Okay, watch your foot. All Sorry, right, sir. Jamal, Darius, and. <laughs> Fuck. Um, Jamal and Darius. <laughs> Yo, this is my friend. What's your friend's name usually? <laughs> Uh, yo, Jamal, what's your homeboy's name? What is it? Damn, I'm drawing a blank right here. Mm. Jamal, Darius, <laughs> Lamar. <laughs> We're not going to do this. We were talking about Lamar Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> yo, Jamal, oh, Darius, shit. and Lamar. And Lamar, I, I give you that. I'll take Lamar, that. Lamont, whatever, that's, that's whatever you want. From a white, because I, I never really think. But yeah, give me your white names. What, close your eyes. Close white, white? Yeah, close your eyes. Picture it. You're you're okay, you're inside a Kroger. Someone bump their cart runs into you. They've got they've got spinach in their cart. Tom is And Tom's pissed. Tom, bro. Tom Tom off the rip. Okay. Philip. Damn, Tom and Philip is Phillip. crazy. But Philip Oh, I hate this name right here, by the way. Go ahead. Spencer? 
Oh, fuck. Spencer? You killed your three. Spencer Tom, Verlowski? Tom, Tom Phillip and Spencer? <laughs> yeah, like those. That's like the all-star white boy right there. You know what I'm Give me your black chicks. You see a chick coming out of Greenbrier Mall on the south side in Atlanta. She's walking out. Shaniqua. <sighs> Number one. All day and tomorrow. Shaniqua's the top joint? Shaniqua. Also? Mm, runner up. Mm. Shaniqua's crazy. Why is like women that I've known you did have dealt with, their names are like shooting into my head right now? Mm, go ahead. Um, fun fact. But, all right, so we got Shaniqua. Um, runner up. Black women don't all have like those type of names though. Like shit, me. Okay, I'm about to give you a name that's universal. It's not so much race predicated. Okay. But I meet a lot of black women with this name. Simple, Brittany. White people got Brittany too, though. Yeah, but I meet a lot of black it's, women. There's too many Britneys on both sides. Yeah, so don't say it. You're saying. <laughs> I mean, shit. If, if you see it. All right, so we'll go Shaniqua, Brittany. It's not gonna be as fun, but Jasmine. Jasmine came. In, uh, do you know a white Jasmine? I don't think I do. I don't know a white. I know Jasmine. a lot of Jasmines. I don't know. Jasmines are really. It, it's it's not. It's it's a standard black name when you don't want to be too ghetto. But 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 yeah. you know what's funny about Jasmine though? Huh? <laughs> I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you why Jasmine's more ghetto than black people think though. Okay. Black mothers spell Jasmine thirty fucking different yeah, ways. It's crazy. And I hate that shit. You could do like you got J A S M I N E. You got J A Z. M I N E. M I N. J A S I M I N E. I hate the Jasmine. Jasmine. Can we stop Jasmine? Can we stop doing that? I like how it looks better though. I hate Jasmine. I'll be honest. Jazz straight to the men looks a little ignorant. I don't even like J A S. Cause why? Why is your name Jasmine? Cause when I call you Jazz for short, now I gotta say J A Z Z, and it's no Z in your name. Jazz is a stupid ass name when you don't spell it. Can we just spell Jasmine J A Z M I N E? I hate the creative spellings on Jasmine. Stop doing that. You named her a basic name. I feel like there should be a little vowel in between the Z and the M. What do you mean? And that's where I come in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Kill <laughs> them. Fine, y'all like Yo, that. you feel me? Right okay. Damn, son. Um, that's amazing. All right. Hell no. Despite having the second best record in the East this year. Who? The Milwaukee Bucks. Okay, they do? Yeah. They fired their head coach, Adrian Griffin. Mm-hmm. And have replaced him with Doc, Mark Jackson, Doc Rivers. Damn, why aren't they it's giving Mark Jackson a second chance? Is um, he not, does he not want to coach? We got to fact check that. I don't know. Great, I, I, I don't know. The, religion or something, right? That shit is bananas. I don't know. I like yo. One thing about Doc, he keeps a fucking job. No, I love Doc. He's a legend. I feel like people have been too hard on him in the past. Pause. When his teams can, ha- we, can we do a hard on him check at the end of this episode? Hey. On Owen? Everyone's five, hard on me. Five hard ons, got it. I right, got it. But listen, it. I'm saying, <laughs> I think that in the past, like he'll make it to the semis repeatedly or whatever. And once his team doesn't win a ring, it's always Doc's fault. And I hate that. Because mm. at the end of the day, he's not on the court. Doc can only do so much. I get you to the semis and everything else. Excuse me. And you don't win a ring and you don't pull it out, pause. Then <laughs> Yahtzee. I think that it's, it's on the player at the end of the day. I disagree. You're out of your mind. As a, I'm, 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 I'm gonna tell you this. What's Denver's coach's name? Exactly. I love him, by the way. You don't know his fucking good name. dude. Mike Malone is a fucking yeah. savage. Picasso knows. Why I like, I like Mike because he's a respectable human being. I li- no, I like. You Mike know Malone. what the fuck you're talking about. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you why it lies on a coach. I'm gonna tell you this right here. At, at, and I'm not, I'm not a pro, y'all. I hope. When it's a game winner, when something's like a game winner, right? It's like say, say the game's tied, and we go, it's going in this person's hand. That's just a make a miss, right? You could deal with that in the playoffs. If you're up 3-1 and you lose that next game, now you're up 3-2, you lose that next game, and your adjustments isn't the reason why you won. Let me give you a prime example. The Warriors were down 3-1 or something like that, right? right? Or no, they were down something crazy. 3-1. Houston, I don't know who it was. He made an, What he did was he took somebody out the starting lineup and started Iggy. That's coach shit. Iggy ends up being the finals MVP. That's a coach decision. That had nothing. He could have left that same lineup and never switched nothing. To me, that's lineup changes. That's coaching shit. I feel like. Yeah, but what if you don't have an Iggy on your team and Paul George just chose? You got somebody. You, you, your job is to get Come everyone on, ready. Stop. No, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you where I lied on the coach. Doc's losing those games where he was way too ahead to lose that series. 
in a game, the points, or in like like bro, you know what Doc had to deal with though? What? Bro, you know one thing that me and you watched together, bro? What? Besides that one video we don't gotta talk about. But Sir? I'm just saying, but no. <laughs> but you know what we watched together? What? The fucking self sabotage of Ben Simmons. Yeah, it was nasty. I, he I had to deal. Like we we putting that on Doc. Bro? No, I ain't putting that on Doc. Doc got a ring though. No, with Boston. But I'm saying, like that though. Like he coached that Sixers team, bro. They went to like three Eastern Conference Finals in a row. Like. The, the, the shot that Kawhi hit where it bounced we, on the rim yeah. six times, that's Doc's fault. We can't blame that on ben Doc. Ben Simmons is Doc's fault. You know like, what year was Doc's fault? Clippers? That was Doc. Stop it. Great team. You had literally, you had a great big. But you no, had the best no one could prepare for like the Golden State storm that came out of matter, nowhere. No. You got, the, no you got one, one of the best shooters. You got everything you need, right? Chris Paul cursed. Damn. The CP3 curse. I love CP3. I want CP3 to is CP3 one. a top five point guard of all time or no? Damn. Top five? What five ahead of him? Steph? Is Steph Isaiah a, Thomas? Oh, hold on. Oh, Magic? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. John Stockton is better than Steph, uh, better than Chris Paul? He didn't have uh, a left hand. I don't Just know. Gave if it to Carl Stockton. Malone on the low I don't know if I'm going to go Stockton. Skill? Skill of the position? I'm going to go CP3. He was a hell of a defender. Though. I'm going to go CP3, and I'm going to tell you why. I feel like. The Warriors was going to lose to the Houston Rockets when they had Kevin Durant. They was down 3-2, and CP3 got hurt, fucked up his ham or something like that. I feel like, I feel like the Warriors No, this is a fact. Who, who, who is this, though? Who is this, though? Was this Dan Tony that year? Yes. Yes, they had Harden. They had uh, P.J. Tucker. To be honest, though, one of the most overrated fucking coaches in the NBA. No matter what. History. But, how openly did not preach defense to But they teams. almost beat that team. And that same team that the Warriors almost lost to, the Warriors went and swept LeBron and them, but we're not going to get in there. We're but, not going to bring that up. Real quick, though, back to the fucking – how do you feel about the hire, though? Because can we hmm. be honest? That I, Someone can fact check me. I could even pull it up. But that Bucks coach is like 30 and 10. So it's not like he's playing bad. There's a, hmm. there's a rumor floating around that he was making jokes about Giannis's brother. Mm. That, like, he was saying that, like – he should be locked up for insurance fraud mm. because he's getting like checks off the NBA and he's not mm. doing anything. I and that did. Giannis was like, "You're not about to be joking on little bro." Or big I like bro, the hire though. It, as good as they doing, I like the hire because he was already going to be replaced. That that he was after they got rid of Budenholzer, who was a great who shouldn't have got fired either. Great by the coach. Way. That, that was I he love won one year, lost the next, and they fired him. That shit was fucked up. That's some wild. That's no. Nah, I like Budenholzer. You know what's crazy? A fun fact about Budenholzer comes from who? What what's who did he learn under? Do you know? Greg Pop. Pop. Oh yeah. Also, do you remember back when Atlanta had like Kyle Corver and Josh? Nice. Them, and they was winning the East every Booty. year, and then LeBron would smack him. Budenholzer. Mm, no, I, no, he, he, I'm, I'm great glad he coach. Preaches team mm. basketball. I like Budenholzer. Damn, I like not getting that job though. I like a black coach getting any job. I like. They I already like, had a black coach. You know though. who I like? Edoka. No, they already had a black coach. Yes. So I'm saying Adrian Griffin's black. I know Adrian's on a very. You know, but nobody was nobody no mm -hmm. fam like that. I'm glad Doc Doc got that job. So you're you're cool with a less popular black guy getting fired for a more popular black guy. I like Doc getting a job, bro. He's a real nigga. He a real old. You see well, that they walk? Both, they both are. You see Doc's walk? Doc got a mean Who walk. Was at the Sixers game? Have y'all seen the videos? How Doc used to sound? Yeah, and that, it's crazy. And now he got that before his voice got fucked up. Yeah, bananas. He's bro. just all crazy. Yeah, he's just now, now he got so like broadcast. I like his voice now though. That shit fire. Crazy. Facts, straight raspy. For sure. Straight I raspy. fuck with Doc, though. I Great that, leader. Yeah. I, I play for Doc. I like Doc getting a job. It's a real one. Um, yeah, man. So, yeah, Doc's taking over Milwaukee. We'll see what they can do the rest of the year. Um, all right, we're at our part of the show where we're going to get to the YSI. Hmm. What is it? YSI is basically when we get to... Who this come from? This comes from Felicia in Houston. Hmm. Okay. Shout out to Felicia, by the way. Um, this is our part my of the name. Is it really? Yeah. Felicia yeah. Brockington. Yep. Hey. Not too much. Good to know. Yeah. I'm gonna write that down. What you want to know? Um, so basically, this is our part of the show where we'll be engaging with our uh, you know, fan mail, so to speak. And um, yeah, answering questions that you gay guys, you gays, you guys, <laughs> you gals. <laughs> You all shows Kim. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> no, but that no. Nah, answer any questions that you all may have uh, for Sai. 
So this comes from Felicia from Houston. She says, uh, somebody I love has a severe cigarette addiction. Um, I don't know what to do, but they're grown. Should I say something or just let them continue down their path? Sai, do you have any input on maybe mm-hmm. managing people with addictions or vices that kind of negatively take hold of their life like that? And 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 what's your what, what would you say? To I feel like this. That? I can't speak for everybody, but I feel like if you consider yourself, I'm not saying I'm the realest nigga walking. I'm just saying if you're a real friend, if you really if you love somebody, I feel like the proper thing to do. All that like, oh, they grown shit. Yeah, we get it. Like you might try to stop somebody from doing something and talk to them about it. And they continue to do it. Well, you have to allow yourself to be that person that when they crash out from that, and they will, they got to go back and say, damn, I remember these two motherfuckers that did try to help me. And I think that's important. I got a homie. I'm not going to say his name on here, but he sm- he smoke a lot of cigarettes. Mm. And I feel like he know I'm the nigga that was throwing his shit away when he when he would turn his head. He'd get out the car for a minute. Damn, I can't find my box of cigarettes. Like, I'm, I was the nigga tossing that. Mm. I was the nigga that was... When he told me he was quitting and I saw him smoke another one, i take it out of his mouth and break that shit like a Twix. Mm. Pause. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, I feel like when you a real one, yes, he's grown. He's probably going to do this shit when he's not around me. I'm not going to chase him all day. But at the end of the day, when he crash out, God forbid if anything happens, if he ends up having a, a, a mean addiction or gets lung cancer or something, God forbid, I pray that he don't. He will be able to say, well, damn, at least all these motherfuckers ain't never tried to help me though. Mm-hmm. But but my nigga Sai... He came to me and he was battling me with it. Like he was, you know, he tried to do his part and I fought it. And I feel like you got to have people like that in your life. I feel like it was times when I might have made certain mistakes and everybody was just being yes men around me. And I had a motherfucker like, nah, Sai, you got to chill. Like maybe you shouldn't do that this time. Those are the motherfuckers that we cherish. So I feel like if you're a real one and you love a motherfucker for real, you can't just sit back and let your auntie or your grandma do crack and you just cool with that and you go on about your business and... Nah, man, say something. Do something. Do something to try to help them. Do your part. And if they go on about their business and do whatever after that, then that's on them. But for you to just mm. ignore it because they grown, that's some corny shit. Nah, and that's facts. how I feel like on that YS, that YS side. Side note, y'all, if y'all ever want to, um, on the engagement, the email, you ever have any questions y'all want us to ask on the show, put your city, your name, email yaskside at gmail.com. Send your questions in. Send your ideas in. We're going to be hand-picking them. If we think it's interesting, all going to pop the question. We're going to run that into it, and I'm going to give you all the best advice that I can, whether it's relationship advice, life advice, some funny shit. You know, we can go all day. You feel me? Let me ask you a question because I know I know we're wrapping up soon, but it's like I've seen a lot of the artists nowadays, a lot of men with their fingernails painted. Mm. What's y'all take on that? Because now, now hear me out. The, the the argument is it's sassy. Let, let's let's throw the elephant in the room. Right. If if you're painting your nails or you're getting a manicure and, and you're getting the shiny buff on it, you know what's masculine? Is this manly? Some artists are getting they, they are they weird? Is it, it does it mean a sign of they like men? Like what's the whole? Can a man go in and get a manicure at a joint without feeling like somebody gonna look at me? I don't. I don't think the issue is the manicure itself. I, I think like, mm. like I, I'll be honest. I go and I go and get a pedicure every every now and then and whatnot for the toes. You know what I'm saying? I'm actually due for one. Feels right good now. though. Team can't been answering the phone. She on some fake shit. Yeah, me we, too. We don't gotta talk about too. it. <laughs> but um, facts. <laughs> um, but the hands I kind of usually just clip myself at the crib type shit. You know me what I'm too. saying? Me um, too. Self clip like my pops. Yeah, facts. I'll be what do you think? About, you. What do you think about the? I'm about to tell you. So <laughs> I don't, I don't even all the way get mad at the shiny buff even. I do. Excuse me. I feel you. I ain't mad at you. <laughs> My thing is color. What? Nails. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My thing is it, it, nah color on the nails though, like mm. pink and blue and black. And Means purple. what to you? Do you it's, care? If I, another nigga do it and walk by, you're gonna be like, this nigga, it, man, it's less some... about care. And or do like, you mind your business? It's less about care, and it is ingrained in me as like a sassy attribute mm. from just the the time period I grew up. I grew up in the '90s, the fucking greatest time to grow up, in my opinion. Mm. And yeah, if you saw the man with his nails painted, you just think like, oh, he he's sweet, he's soft, he's gay, mm. he's sassy, whatever. Mm. Not even on some I'm clowning you, mm. just on that's what that's what it is. Right. What's funny is when you brought this up, you brought it up as sassy. 
But I was going to say, hmm. I actually feel like in our culture today, like in society, like it's it's not even seen as that sassy. Like a lot of people aren't even calling it out as sassy. They're just kind of like, oh, this is what people are doing. Maybe some OGs. Because they scared to say something. Yeah, maybe some OGs is calling it out. But I will be honest, like. It's not so since I've been seeing it. I know Drake's done it. I know Yachty's done it. It pissed mm. me off when Drake did it too. By the way, it, it, it did piss me off. I know these motherfuckers have done it. Mm. I've never seen it and even remotely been like, you know what? I think I'm gonna do it too. <laughs> I've never once had that thought. Mm. It is something that like I don't judge them, but it do come off like, bro, you don't gotta take it that far. You you got yeah. shoes, sneakers, socks, everything else to color code, match, do whatever. The nails to me, it's just like. What are we doing, bro? I feel like it's the thin line. I think I think we're getting confused in that where, first of all, do whatever you want to do. I think I think we have to have an open thing of like, we don't always have to have opinions on, I look at it as my father to my son. Mm. That's why I, I, I don't, you niggas want to go out there and paint your shit? I don't, I don't give a, you ain't my mans. You huh. know what I mean? Now, is, now, I feel like men are doing too many things that women dominate in. Mm. And that's the problem to me. It's not that a nigga can't do. Uh, yeah, of course it's not. It, it's not like it's unisex clearly, but it's like all right. It is okay to go get ahead and get some self care. Take care of yourself. You know what I mean? Get your shit clipped up. Maybe get the cuticles. I I, I, I heard that there's extra things besides just clipping your fingernails. Because right, right, right. I just clip my fingernails and I keep it moving. Make sure you ain't got no dirt all all up in your nails and all that like that. But I feel like once you got your hand out like this, you know what I mean? For them to paint your joint. And shine it, I feel like it gets a little ladylike. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying you gay. I'm not saying you not gay. Do whatever the fuck you do, right? All I'm saying is it gets a little ladylike when y'all start doing things that the women dominate in. It wasn't that niggas couldn't go get the little man bags. It just was like, yo, fam, that looks like a purse. <laughs> right. You know Facts. what I mean? It's, I'm Facts. not saying you this or that. I'm not saying you gay or not, and I'm mad at homosexuals or not, because I'm not. Do what you do in your own time. Right, right. What I'm saying is, 99% women do this. 99% of my life I've been lied to. Right. So <laughs> I just found out my mom does more dope than right, I do. Dude. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's not that if I see a woman under a car fixing an alternator, I'm going to be like, that's a little manly. It's not that a woman can't fucking right. do it. I'm a little surprised. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, fellas, let's let the ladies have what they have. Like, and if you like doing it, do what you do. That's why I don't do it. Mm -hmm. My pops ain't do it. And I'm my son. So take care of yourself. Go to shorty if you have to. That that's even doper. Hold on, no. fellas can't go together. Me and you are never going to get that done together. Why not? No. But hear me out. No. You're making it a thing. It doesn't have to be a thing. Can you go with your fellas to get a mani or a petty? I, it's niggas doing it though. No, but hold on go a second. Shorty. If we don't got a shorty, maybe coincidentally, we happen to meet a bad joint out somewhere. She's a nail tech, and her home grows with her, and she's a nail tech. And we might run a play, and they're like, yo, y'all should come get your feet done. And we go, and you talking to the one shorty, and I'm talking to the other shorty. We're there. All right, so then why are you being a son of a bitch about That's, it? And I'm, I'm saying me and you, like I hit you, and oh, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, 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 yo, like, and I hit you like, hey, yo, hey, yo, what you, yo. yo, what you doing today? I got a, I got a me plus one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's no, 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 no. Okay, me yeah. and you go my, get out. My bad. We're yes. not doing that. No, no, no. You feel me? Fuck no. It, it's certain things... I had this argument with a chick about the word brunch. I'm not going to call my mans <laughs> and, me and mention brunch to you. Right. I'm not saying me and you but can't. You, your radar for this is a little more strict. It's a little, like, it's a little over the top. You, you, won't, like, you won't go get sushi with a homeboy. Why are we doing that? It's food. Women, I love sushi. A woman put me on the sushi, right? <laughs> right. A woman put me on the candles. I used to think candles was for girls. Really? Yeah. I was a young dumb nigga. So the woman said, this should make your house smell good. And now I go get a candle. But me and you are not going to Bath and Body Works together to yeah, pick scents. I mean, yeah. I'm not doing that with you. No? No, bro. Hell no. But we can leave that alone. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Fellas, let the ladies do what they do. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, nah, facts. All right, man. I think uh, the Sorry Not Sorry show, episode one, man. First episode felt good. I felt loose. I didn't feel... I felt us. real loose. You, we were busting it wide open the whole time with the commentary. I don't know. This nigga talking about the episode of <laughs> some, some fruity shit. <laughs> you said you felt real loose. How I come felt, I got I've gotten paused like seven times this episode. Were you nervous? 
No, but you just said real loose. It didn't get a pause. Then a second ago, you said if I hit my man's, it didn't get a pause. Black privilege. Black privilege. BV. Finally. BV. How does it feel? Um, I'm gonna let you have it. Thank you. That could be a pause too, but I felt loose too. No, nah, I did though. It felt good though, man. Just we got a lot of shit coming for y'all, man. Um, y'all stay tuned. We're gonna have these segments going for y'all. These these topics. Hit the YS uh Sa. Tap it to the website. Sorry, not sorry show dot com. It's gonna be a good movie. You know what I'm saying? The merch coming soon. Oh yeah, yeah. People reminded me to let y'all know. We're gonna launch all this shit, man. Y'all just stay tuned on the site. We're gonna launch everything. It's hoodies. You know what I'm saying? Mugs, condoms, everything. dental dams, crayons, Every fucking thing. colored pencils. Yep. Um Yeah. Every fucking thing. So good morning, everybody, man. And in case I don't see you later, good, good afternoon, afternoon, good, good evening, evening, good night, good night. man. Tapping out. Holla. I don't want to thank everybody for tapping into the Salary Not Sorry show. We need y'all to like, comment, and subscribe now, please. All right? Check out the official website, thesalarynotsorryshow.com. You want him to subscribe to you, daddy, yeah? You want him to f***ing subscribe? We're done. All right. Shake Shack. You don't get to talk to people here, by the way. Kicking back with the chicken shack. Add to the bag and don't be a f***. What are we doing? You call me fries? No fries. No drink. I'm on welfare. I'm trying to enjoy a meal. Me and my black family. We don't have it like that. We're trying to figure it out. What position is 66? Let's dick the butt, son. Dick the cheeks. Get it in between and get some crispy cream. You know what I'm saying? Chicken sandwiches. To go. To go. Oh, okay. Like not for here. We all like a piece of piece of new pussy every now and then. Presentation alone. Or Shake Shack's kicking him in the dick. Two. Two for one. You know what you're getting. Everybody does. Go. Whoa. <laughs> you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah. Shit it on him. Shit on what? As soon as it hits the lips. <laughs> My mother was a bread baker. Facts all blacks. Every time. I want waffle fries. Eat product. the chicken out. Eat a bun. Don't eat the edge of the bun and shit pissing me off on this brioche. Oh my god. Hey, ma'am. Ma'am. Go try it. Go compare it. Y'all tell me some of y'all ain't never had Shake Shack. But um, I'm impressed. <laughs>